Right, this is going to be another episode of Counterpoints, and this is going to be the one before the major. So obviously we will do a bunch of storylines. It doesn't have to only be about the major, but obviously all roads lead to Rome or Copenhagen in this particular case, and so we will cover that angle. Right, I actually feel like, Maniac, of all the majors ever, what's quite cool for me about this one is, if you think about how the year began... Before Katowice, people would actually probably unironically have said, like, yeah, it's exciting that you have, like, you know, Astralis' lineup, that maybe the Falcons, I'm f- forget the exact chronology when all these laps were complete, but, you know, you had a bunch of teams that maybe were exciting. Maybe people even were excited about Team Spirit, obviously. People wondered what Chiro would be like on the team. But I actually think at the time, because of the way the finals had all gone, where it was just phase vitality every time and the vitality won, it's like, actually, I think people were sort of thinking this major is going to be like a little bit obvious, you know, whereas what's funny is with the way things have worked out, I have to say, this is actually one of the more messy majors I think I've ever seen going in where like, even like for me, it's more, I don't even know that I necessarily have teams that are specifically like definitely up here and there. It's more like I just have tears, I feel like. Yeah. And I actually feel like on this episode, we could go so many places. There's so many sort of dark horse angles I think you could even take too of teams that have interesting lineups or maybe they're peeking out or even worse. I mean, obviously the case of teams that have Vitality. Maybe they're actually not peaking. Maybe they're actually going to just shit the bed and come like ninth or just fifth to eighth or yeah. something. It's really plausible at this point. Like, it actually feels like this first CS2 major is pretty wide open. Because the funny thing is, Maniac, the one thing I'd say at the beginning is, even though I hated that we only had one major last year, the argument a lot of other people had was... I mean, they would say it's it's why it was good to not have the first major in CS go be like in 2012 or the first year. Because the problem is the game would be scoffed, wouldn't it? You're like, mm-hmm. you'd, you'd always think back. Like, I mean, it's true. If you'd have had like the majors, like the first event in CS2, for example, it was IM Sydney, you'd have a million people complain about the AWP and the smokes. It's true. There would be that aspect. But what do you think about this? Like, I feel like it's quite, I'm, I'm almost quite excited. I'm almost a bit scared. Though. I, don't, I don't know if anyone's good. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. Uh, I think the game itself is in a, a decent position. There's still a little bit of the, the clipping and some of the jumps issue that I would love to, to have it fixed. But the game itself feels like it's in a decent place for us to just welcome the major and not have the, com- the conversation being like held hostage about the bugs and all that kind of yes. shit. So we're done with that. I think we're cool. Um, when it comes to teams, I'm, I'm a little bit going in your sense where I see tiers of teams and I, I wonder like, okay, what's the floor of sort of these teams? Like I, I feel like there's a, a pretty clear first ballot which would be phase spirit vitality it feels like they are a little bit aside from the rest of the pack but even within that team i have so many different ways like or within that uh, ballot rather i have so many different ways you can look at it and attack it like which team of these three is the safest bet in terms of floor level well i think it's phase which of these teams has the highest peak Probably Spirit, yes. which the team has the most consistency in the last year. Probably Vitality. So it's like there's so many different ways you can attack it. Um, that makes it extremely wide open. I have a sense, though, that between the elimination stage and the opening stage, there is a little bit of a gap. And I would be incredibly surprised if the winner of the major comes from the opening stage. I feel like the floor of the sure. opening stage is a little bit below what we are used to because there were certain upsets happening at the RMR, certain big teams failed, Astralis, Falcons, you mentioned it. I feel like the floor is a little bit below what we're used to, but yeah, it's goddamn wide open. Like If you, if you can tell me now who's going to win the major, well, respect, respect. Yes. Oh, we'll say actually, to be fair, when I do look at the layout of like who's going to be playing in the first Swiss stage and who gets to skip to the next one, even though I despise these qualifiers, they haven't done a bad job of the teams that did qualify of sort of sorting the better ones into the top 16 one. At least we'll actually have like the real teams, like you say, the yes. second Swiss. Because you're right, if you look at the opening stage, like realistically, the biggest names are like Cloud9, Ensign, Heroic, and those particular lineups now would be pretty crazy if they won the major. That'd be pretty Eternal Fire too. Oh, yeah. What? No, 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 maniac. For you, Eternal Fire, not for Thorin. Eternal Fire. Here's <laughs> sorry, the thing. Sorry. You realize. Listen, I know fucking major is from the French, and now I know now he's suddenly Turkish. But I knew him as someone from the French scene back in 1.6. Your world, maniac. So I understand that. Except here's the thing. I will point out, and I will always fucking point this out. He wasn't a fucking IGL. Why did they do that thing? Me. I hate when they do this. It would be like if now we all pretended Apex won his two majors as I an know. IGL. He didn't, did he? Like he won the second one. Yeah, I'll give you that. But like, the rest of his career was an entry. Like. They, 
it, first of all, he wasn't that. He was like actually a star player. People don't. He was like a skilled player. One point a long six. time ago. And then secondly, I'm just going to throw this out there. One of the reasons why I never come along on that train of the whole major thing of like, oh, he's a good IGL. It's like, because the thing about his team, think about it, guys. If you take him out of the equation, if you don't mention his name, you have a team that historically never quite gets it together. They have like one or two players just hard carry them with him. And then they famously never have a bat pool and they just fall apart on land. Like, that's not a great set of like conditions for a good IGL, guys. Like, I'm sorry. You might like the story, like, but I don't care. Like, in fact, I even think Eternal Fire, the stupid thing is, I think the major angle is a distraction. And what makes this team actually interesting is they finally did, after all these years, make the super team of Turkish players and finally yes. get like the concoction that worked. It's why, in a way, uh, here's the one thing I'll say about Eter Eternal Fire, and then give me your thoughts on why you have them as like, because a lot of people actually think they could be like a dark horse, obviously, like you mm. say. It's because, obviously, look, the potential with nearly all those players individually, and obviously the new guy is fucking amazing, was always yeah. there. Like, Woxic was good, he just didn't play with the rest of them. Zantaris was good, but then Zantaris and Calix, you know, they always had that thing going on for years and years where, like I say, it's like they were tweaking the tincture, as it were. But I tell you what, it worked. Like, in the end, they panhandled and they did get the best lineup. They had a lot of times where it looked like it didn't work, or, like I say, it made one or two people good and then the others couldn't perform. But actually, this is the best version they've ever had of these Turkish lineups, for sure. Yes. I agree with you. This It is the best that Turkish Counter-Strike has ever put together. I think the arrival of, of Wikadia and, and how he's been playing online is a super plus, running. knowing the quality of Woxic and his entire is already here. I also think that Kalix is a little bit underrated in the sense of like, he doesn't get any star roles anymore. Oh, like, he's sure. basically just a glue, but I think he does a pretty good job at it. And just the quality of Counter-Strike in general is pretty high. Like They're not a team that plays a whole lot of messy rounds. They have pretty good fundamentals in how they play. Um, Honestly, if you just look at 2024 and the games that they have lost, they haven't lost games against teams they were not supposed to. Like, there are losses to FaZe and best of three. There's losses to FaZe again in best of three. And then losses to Na'Vi and G2. The Na'Vi one stings a little bit more because I remember in Karavice, EF looked a little bit tired and they kind of just ghosted through the last map. So that, that took me down a notch when it comes to EF. But... Personally, I don't know if that's a hot take or not. I think the playoffs is playable for Internal Fire. I think they can make playoffs. Okay. I think they're I think they're in the conversation for making playoffs. Anything above quarterfinal would be insane. Again, it probably depends on the matchups that you get if sure. you get there. Um, but I think they are a candidate for playoffs. And if it doesn't really happen, then I think it would really kill the whole vibe around this roster and their improvement and some of the names they've been able to take down. And the, I don't know. If they were if they were to fail at the major. It, I don't even know where I would stand on this lineup anymore. Because now, if it's not now, then it's it's just never going to be. Like, everything is kind of coming together. They have a bit of momentum. They've had decent success as well. Only extremely strong teams have beaten them. They come very close to take down, like, the giants of the Counter-Strike. So, we, we'll have to see. Uh, you, you never know with the Swiss system and, like, the, the points, like the Buchholz points or whatever, who you play. That obviously comes into consideration. But I, since I consider them to be a pretty decent BO1 team, and we know how important this is at the major, yeah, yeah, I can see them in playoffs. By the way, I'll just throw this out there because some people will have seen that news where it said that like Forest would be registered as the complexity sub. But there's also one where technically Simple's listed as a sub for Navi. Like, don't even play games with my heart <laughs> like that. How how no. actually dare you now? Even though I know, by the way, I'm almost certain, guys, they're not actually going to ever play him. That's just for real. If someone got injured, I imagine he's just said, like, I'm available yes. again. And it's like, you know, it's just if he would be able to fly, he obviously has the money, he need capability, he could just fly in and play. He's not, they're not actually really good at using their guys. Like I say, that's just almost like you just try to play with my heart at this point in time by putting that news out there. Like there's a chance you could really do the meme of like, is that Simple's music? Like WWE start. Come on, boys. But anyway, <laughs> here's what we'll do. Let's. Well, I'll try and keep some of these topics thematic. So what we'll do is I'll give you, I'll counter then, Maniac. Since okay. you, you presented Eternal Fire as a team that could sort of master the ladder of chaos that will be the Swiss system and this open parity major that I did talk about. So to be fair, I have opened that door. I'll tell you my, my team that I think can do the same thing and walk kind of the dark horse path into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And then who knows, maybe even make like a once series playoff though. It's actually heroic, mate. It's okay. actually heroic for real because what th I keep telling people heroic has the same problem Entz did, which is because we initially knew for all this time that they're potentially going to lose out on off-season drama. Like obviously in the case of heroic, they initially were going to lose their stars to Astralis. And then there was the whole thing of like people at least got the respite of like, well, you're getting the Entz core because supposedly Saw was trying to bring over the whole core. I've heard there was even a world where I think even like the Jokers even Snappy could have joined. I think the whole Entz team could have joined heroic or something like that. And basically, obviously that didn't happen. Falcon scooped those players 
players last minute. Ents did get some, like they got Nurts, but then they got Nurts on his own. And so then people were sort of like, well, the problem is Nurts is the most recent one to Ents. Like, so is Nurts even himself a stud? Is he a snappy star product? No, no one really knew. So I feel, and then you look at the team, they put it together really slowly. Like they kept the Shush and Tessas. By the way, I've always actually thought Shush especially slightly underrated player ever since Mad Lions. But okay, yeah, I get that to others. They're sort of the side pieces, you know, after you've stripped mind out mm. Yabby and Stown. And then you get... Um, what the fuck? Ni- Obviously, Nikodos, this, Nikodos Nikodos come in. Look, that's the one player I'm out on. We'll get to that in a second. I'm not a fan of his in general. I actually do think he was never that good. And then, obviously, Kickstand um, came as an IGL. Now, the Kickstand angle is interesting because I will say I had started to hear some rumblings from some people in the scene that made it sound like behind the scenes he did have a shooey type rep of like, this is the next good IGL. Like, he's mm. going to definitely be there, blah, blah, blah. Like, I've heard there's a world where, by the way, he could have potentially been the replacement for Snappy and Ents. And it could have been him with, I'd, look, at the time, I think it would have been the original call was the plan, not. The, obviously these Polish players that, that's something that Richard even yeah. revealed they apparently had like 12 hours to figure out how to fill out the roster before the qualifier or something mad so that, that wasn't even necessarily a big plan I think it was just a pivot so basically that's all to say I actually think they it's just almost like they put the team together in such a sleeper way that looked like each time, like sort of like, oh, we've got this person, but it's like, ah, but how will that yeah. work out? But then, mate, when you actually see them play, the Nikodos one is the only angle I'm not that in on. Because first of all, he actually doesn't even AWP that much, is one thing. I'd, someone pointed out, I looked up the stats, true. He hasn't even got that many AWP kills, mate. And then two, he's just not that good at AWP. I'm just going to put it out there. Whereas the rest of the team, dude, now that I've seen them especially play, this, the, uh, here's how I'll describe it. I think the flaw in this team's really good, mate. Like, this team actually looks like, in, in, like you put them into, like, BO3s. I think there's a lot of teams here that, like, maybe even have bigger names that they could potentially be in the right matchup. Like, because you look at the squad, first of all, mate, Nerds, I, I'll hold my hands up, it definitely isn't just a fucking snappy product. This guy's, yep. now, he's, now he's gotten into the team, he's fucking cooking, mate. He's actually just really good. In fact, the cool thing about him is, here's how I'll update his narrative. Remember, it was only about a year ago that he came into the tier one scene with Ents, so to be Hey, he's still pretty young in his career. He's, he's fucking cooking, boys. It's going to be yes. like, un- unless he has some sort of axile type drop off, this is going to be one of the next great riflers. Like, for real, there's one reason right now why I'm excited about Heroic. I feel like if I pause the game right now and I have to write a list of players, dude, Nurse is like top 10 player. He might even be like borderline top five. Maybe he's, he's a really good player. Then you've got like those pieces, Tessas and Schuss, they just do their jobs, man. They're just good at their roles. So I actually think, and then Kicks are actually fair play. I can see why he got the hype. He's, he's been pretty good so far. So I've actually, I've this is my team that could sneak into the playoffs that she'd be a okay. playoff team which by the way think about like the last major if you knew that they'd changed all these players out and if you even looked at some of these names before we did Blast Paris you'd be like what the fuck that, that's not a good line like, this is a good lineup actually fair play I don't know how they've put it together but it's sort of in the end this is why I assume the Saw guy must have a decent eye like he sort of got a decent lineup out of it at the end in fact kind of, kind of a sleeper for me yeah no definitely uh, I would say they have overperformed they have exceeded the expectations that i have put together when this roster came about like i really thought it's not not that exciting we're not really going to have them in conversations for late runs in tournaments but actually there are, there are two main players which I, I join your opinion that really not surprised but either confirmed what we thought was going to happen or even overperform i think kickson as an igl is the future like i think he's already now within this roster proving what he can do with like the mid-round callings and the uh, the switching of pace of what he's capable of doing already. He's got a very Carrigan slash Shui vibe to him. And if I'm if I'm a GM of like the very, very high caliber teams, I'm already setting my eyes on this guy, like keeping track of what he's doing and how he's behaving. He's pretty young as well. And yep. like the demeanor that he's got when he talks in interviews, like he's already got a certain authority in how he's talking about his team and what he wants to do, which I had already found in Shui in Game of Legion. And I thought, what the, what the hell? Like, how is this young guy already talking like that? Why is he giving me the feeling that he knows what he's doing when you have sometimes older people which seem all over the place and they have no idea? So Kixen, super positive. Nerds took a risk itself. We had a conversation, you and I, months ago when this lineup came together and we said it could be make or break for Nerds. Like, he could literally disappear because he was rookie of the year 23. He was in the pipeline to be one of the greats in terms of rifling uh, skills and now he joins heroic and he could completely fade away that's not happening like he keeps on delivering he keeps on delivering again and again and he's making a name for himself in a different setup so that for me these are the pluses definitely you talk about the floor of shish and tesis i will agree until we reach late stage tournaments and playoffs i think Tezis particularly always had a tendency oh, sure. to sort of yes. get a little bit frail. He's a bit of a flick. Of a He's a bit of a flick. A little bit. A little bit. He's got that. And I'm I'm yet to be proven that he doesn't have it in sure. Heroic. That needs to be happen. And I also think that because of how uh, young this roster is together, 
if they are faced against teams who punch hard, we're talking like super skill, like mechanically skilled teams, I think they can they can just get shut down completely. Like G2 shut them down twice in Katowice. Vitality destroyed them. Spirit destroyed them. So there is like a level in terms of skill. If they're not able to match, they, they, they don't have, they probably haven't had time to put the work in to get like all of the fine little details, the fine little strategies. The play side is relatively simplistic. It's good late round decisions, good mid round decisions that they have, but the play side is relatively simplistic. So I, if you tell me now, hey, Mania, can Heroic make top eight? I would say, yeah, yeah, there's a conversation. But I, once you get there, I think they would need an incredibly friendly draw to go further than that because there, there are a few teams out there who can sure. just slap the shit out of them. By the way, guys at home, I understand that Maniac's doing like analysis there. Like he's not only addressing my point because obviously I didn't say Rook was going to win the major. Like he's just no. showing you that we're not going too far and saying they're going to beat everyone. I agree, by the way. Like there is a certain tier of team they shouldn't actually beat. But I think people will just be surprised how many teams, I don't know, four to sort of 15 in the world. I think they could beat loads of these teams, especially yes, on the right I tier, agree. you know. No, by the no, way, here's a fun one we'll pivot to. Uh, uh, by the way, if, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go team for team. You pick a team and then we'll, we'll go I team for team. I pick a team now. One. All right, so I'm going to say that, unfortunately, the hype around Ents is going to die down at the moment. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I like what that maniac is. He, this is where people actually never give you your flowers, mate, is I've <laughs> noticed this over the years. It's not what people say, which is that maniac's just too nice and all he ever does is say everyone's good. He doesn't. He'll even basically, he has even basically implied some people might get fired from teams. He just does it in a classy way. He's just eloquent with how he does it. And he, he do, also, to be fair, the area where your niceness comes in is you do just stack in a million disclaimers, which is like, look, that's the difference between me and you, maniac. Like, I actually do think some of those go without saying, but you do have to say them for idiots like again if, you, if you say that you know I think Zemo actually didn't have a good game you do then have to go but I still think he's a good player and I'm not saying he's like mm. you do have to, I know I get it like everyone gets it but we get, they, we got to play the game well, I, but let's let's get into this then because obviously the reason why I actually think people would be shocked to hear you say that before they've even played is obviously everyone's riding these like do you, well you could even say there's like three sort of like fucking feel good hallmark movie angles right there's the Glaive return everyone loves that wouldn't we all love to see Glaive do well at a major and by the way with none of his original players so no one could take the credit from him. It'd just all be him, wouldn't it? Then you've got the whole thing of people like Cuban, who wasn't a fan of Cuban. We all love him from back in the day. And then thirdly, you've got people, any of them that you want in the polls, like that interesting mix of people, the nine people or whatever. The whole point is there's so many reasons if you're just a fan to yeah. feel positive emotion. But I know what you mean, Mania, because here's the problem. A bit like heroic, but I actually do agree. I also think Enter has way more fall off. They've also, this is the, this is why we use that term, punched above their weight, right? Because some of the wins they have had, really, like I will say, I watched it and it's like actually a kid's movie. I was like, this is wonderful. What an amazing story. It can't possibly last, of course. The cynical part of me <laughs> says they will definitely lose their, there is a bit of that. I know what you mean. Come on, hit that's me with it. Why, why, why are you an end stumer? Come on. <laughs> that, that's how I feel. Because the problem that I have is that there are too many, there are too many modifiers and contextual factors to the wins that they've had for me to think it's going to happen again. Like, if you have a heart and you feel feelings in your life, you kind of identify with Ents and what they were doing in kind of yeah. sense. Like, oh my God, it's incredible. This core of Polish players, Dihai in his hometown, is going to spot it. Wow. And yes. then what do you know? You have Ents playing against Astralis twice and now Glaive is suddenly having an incredible performance where he, like the first map against Astralis is completely incredible. Like he's putting, I think he even had like the best land rating maps he's had in his entire career. So he comes out and he drops like an incredible game. He calls beautifully. And you see all of these kind of stacking up together. And yeah, when Enz does that, you think, oh shit, like they're, they're doing it. Wow, like what the hell is going on? I just think there are, there are too many modifiers and contextual factors to these wins for me to say it's going to happen again. So that's one point. The very, there, is, there was caveat, very clear caveat to all of those impressive wins that Enz have had. And the other thing, the other problem as well is that now, as a new team, they're getting into this murky water territory where you're not only calling on spontaneous feelings, you're starting to establish and working on some of the shit that you need to work on. And that's one of the trickiest moments as a lineup when you come together. Because the beginning is fine. The beginning is, hey, listen, guys, we know we're not exactly at the best right now, so let's do a little bit on the fly. Let's communicate all with each other. Ah, if you miss the smoke, that's okay. Don't worry about it. We're going to figure it out. It's going to be all good. There is a lightness. that's very lighthearted in how you approach Counter-Strike. And then time passes and you're actually, okay, guys, let's get down to it. Now we need to figure out the strategy. Okay, this is the role that you're going to have. And suddenly you're not working in the same mode. And this is where I think ENS is currently right now. They're probably trying to deep work into their Counter-Strike. And the, I see many teams that could beat ENS that at name value, you wouldn't think that's the case. 
But that's that's how I see it. If Ents is being put against a better team than them, but they have like an emotional attachment to it, what it, it was the case with Astralis, or when they played against a Vitality that was a little bit frail, cool, they can they can do the upset. But without the drama, without the the Hollywood angles to it, the romantic movies, I I don't believe that Ents is gonna. I don't. Know. For me, for me, they uh, they make it through the opening stage and then they die down in the elimination stage. Prob like I, that's where I would see them, honestly. Anything above that would surprise me. No, I know what you mean. Like the saddest thing is, in some ways, you have to just like you have to just uh, uh, be happy that the Katowice incident, let's say episode, happened in the way it did. Because like I say, it gave you a feel good angle. There was, and by, mm. by the way, it was actually quite. I'm not a super sentimental guy in general, but it's quite. It was quite emotional. You could see yes. these people were all authentic. It wasn't one of those fake cries that people do with these. Want the attention or bring the camera to me? Like it seemed genuine. I, I agree. Yes. With you. It, it gave me a little. A bit of emotion too. Obviously, they could have even gone further. It was kind of a cool storyline. But I'm with you, mate. The problem is, people have to remember, you, what you have to do, guys, is this. Every time one big result happens that you don't expect, you have to, like, zoom out again and ask, is that the new pattern? Is that how it's going to be from now on? Or is that the outlier? And I'm sorry, like I alluded to, Maniac, this just looks so blatantly like Katowice was the outlier. Like, for a start off, I'll start at the head of the snake in terms of the players that you would need to perform. The guy who smurfed Katowice, guys, was Hades, the old mm. the old Ents player. You remember the one that was back with the Spink slide up all those years ago when they made the semis of that major? And the problem was, the reason he got replaced, and I'm sorry, he's one of those players I did used to call for even when they were good, like they should probably potentially look at replacing this guy. It's because he's too streaky. He's way too streaky and he's your primary output. So the problem is, like you saw here, hey, he actually got it all together at this land. Now, I will tell you, his numbers were really fucking good for that land. Yes. The problem is, though, that's just not him in his career. And so if you're telling me you're going to take him then to a major, so even more pressure... And then as you say, actually at the moment, they probably have the honeymoon effect where like one thing that you've nailed there is another thing about the honeymoon effect is it's a bit like why standings sometimes are better than you expect. It's because you just don't put as much pressure on perfection. You sort of just say, hey, can, what yeah. can we get today? And we'll accept that was part of the problem of actually having a real lineup where you're trying to actually be the best in the world is you have to be kind of, a, you have to kind of hold each other accountable, right? You have to sometimes have disputes or you have to realize like, hey, actually, if, if essentially I don't have my role or resources, I better get it now because otherwise I can't just let a year go by before we get it. So, so yeah, that's true. Now they're going to be into the minutiae of that. And the problem there, mm. again, is like they are a bunch of Polish players plus Glaive. Like that's not necessarily the most automatic fix of all time. So I don't buy that the Hades guy performs the same way. Then you look at the players who were the nine players. They already had sort of issues being as good on land guys, except on vertical, bizarrely. And I'm sorry, of those players, like the Kyler guy, I always thought was a little bit flaky. So like I'm, I'm going to keep my eyes on him. Aside from that, like, look, I actually think it's not a bad lineup. I think, you know, if you no, put him in a normal no. tournament, it's decent. But I'm with you. I think if there's ever a time a team like this doesn't unfortunately do a dark horse, so it's now. I actually think right now, especially, it's also, by the way, they haven't played many tournaments. So I think people are sadly probably overhyping the small sample size of Canavita. So I'm with you. I actually think it's, I wouldn't have picked this team as one of my top eight teams. Like when we get to no. that. Later, and that hurts me. I, I wish I wish I could sure. because also Glaive, Glaive in Copenhagen. There's something to it as well. He's oh, returned sure, yeah. after the hard time in Australia. It's like, don't get me wrong. If you ask me from the heart, I would say, oh, I hope to see Glaive yes. walking in Royal Arena. Everybody standing up for the captain, to whatever. But I would be very surprised if that happened. Okay, and now I'll you just tell you. you I'll just tell you one last thing you can do statistically to make yourself realize it's probably not going to happen, guys. Is just go and look for this lineup, what like their CT fragging is like. It's not good. It's not good. And I'm telling you right now, one thing I actually do think in CS2 is as long as you have like decent CT fragging, you have a chance, mate. You'll be in most games. If you, if you have a problem in that area, I mean, think about what you put on Glaive's shoulders. You just have to win a tee half mm. every time. Like, that's, that's yeah. too much for me. That's too much to ask for. So, right, yeah, go then. Right. Should we pivot? Should I was going to say, it's your team now. You, can, yeah. you get to choose a team now. Right, what's fun is, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about spirit, but I actually want to initially start with an interesting discussion, which goes like this. You know what, Maniac? We've never seen this match yet, sadly, in CS2. But the second Katowice ended, my first thought was, because I've actually made a video about this in the past, I referenced it on Snake and Banter. I've always thought that actually, if you set it up properly, you know, like they did that E-League clash for cash years ago where they had VP play Astralis in the rematch mm -hmm. in the major final, right? The problem with that was the, the execution was poor because they just didn't know because CS moves so fast that even though it had only been like six months, obviously VP had dropped off in that time, like in their world of sports, you know, 
You could invite a team from last year who's the best. They'll be the best this year. That's how sports works, right? So the problem they had was just like it, it didn't work in executions. People thought the idea was bad. I actually think that idea would be amazing if it was actually like a circuit, like I said. Like what I would do is I would have like one-off exhibition matches. But the point is, it's sort of like heavyweight title fight. So what you do is you have like a champion and then they play like the challenger and then you'd go like that, right? If you had something like that, Maniac, the ultimate time to invoke it would have been right after Kadavitsi, because I'm pretty sure everyone out there, like me, thought, think of the teams I've just seen Spirit play, think of how I've just seen them play, think about how CS2's been. Bro, can I just see this team now immediately play Vitality? Yes. Can I just have, can I just have them tomorrow? Like I literally, t let me take this spirit with this donk, and then I just want the real vitality and real zero. Just drop them mm. in the other side of the server. I play a BO5. In fact, you know what? Fuck Vito's. Just pick the maps you want. Let's just play this. Let's see. Because I wanted to know in that moment. Is this just a fucking one-off by spirit? <laughs> is Vitality actually not going to be a bit? Because I'll tell you one thing. This is where I'm going to start the discussion, mate. Is if I had to pick who the like overall team is, like the number one team, even though like this is what's weird. You said it before when you talked about those three teams, Spirit, Fears, and Vitality. Here's what I would say. When Vitality has been able to, in the past, hit all their peaks, they were the number one. That's why they would win. In the final, a bunch of players would pop off. They couldn't, even Fears couldn't stop them. Fears obviously had the, the best flaw because they would just always be in the final. Basically, it was only Vitality. Like you mm. beat them. And then Spirit has had this insane one pop off, but we just don't know yet. We probably imagine some of the players will be amazing and maybe some of the team form goes down. Bro, I actually do feel like of the three teams, this might sound mad, I actually feel like Vitality actually of the three is probably the least likely to win the major for me right now because they're obviously not in great form. They themselves, by the way, were operating on honeymoon things. They were bringing those players in one by one by one. People still forget that. People act like they've had the whole lineup in CS2. No, they've only just integrated Messi, guys. And by the way, he hasn't been there that long. He's had a few bad games even. So I even wonder by the way, if they failed the major, they might even consider Carter a player. Like, that's not impossible. He's not some legacy player. He's not some all-time great player. Like, might happen if there's pressure on them. So I will just put this out there. Like, I actually think Vitality's not in that great shape. But they're obviously the team, especially with Zebu, that I want to see play against Spirit. Bro, I have yeah. to say, right now, obviously I haven't seen enough matches, I haven't seen any, to know what would actually happen. I low-key feel like, even if Vitality might end up, maybe they will be a better team than Spirit, but I actually feel like Spirit would beat them here. I actually think that might be the team, because when I think of how they played, like one of the things about Vitality that's impressed me when they played other teams is, they, the actual skill factor is real for Vitality. They can, they can overwhelm you, mate. They can just win. In those chaotic rounds where like, you just rush into one of the sites on Anubis, the amount of times I've seen them just win the duels, guys. Not even that they did like an amazing smoke or flash, or they had a timing or a cop. They just won the duels. Like sometimes even people like, the joke is not just evil, people like Flames will just do a 3K out of nowhere. And just, oh, well, there's a round. And th that was happening so much for them. I actually think low-key, the thing I like about Spirit, it's not just the dog fact, it's like the system they have. Oh, like, absolutely. Mate, that, I feel like that system when they're on T-side is really hard to face, mate. Like, and the problem is, like, I think Vitality can outshoot anyone or be in the game, but what are they going to do on CT side against that? I feel like your comms are going to be really fucking confused. What are you, where are you at on this one? I want to get a sense of that one because we haven't had that match. I'm kind of shadow boxing, no. obviously. Definitely. So I think for the sake of the argument, we would have to discuss a, a, a space in which Vitality is peaking, right? That's for the sake of yes. the argument. No, the no, I'm with you. Happen in, yes. in, in the Vitality and Katowice is not even a conversation. Yes. Like, it's, So let's, let's, for the sake of argument, let's imagine that Vitality is kind of playing a good level or close to their best level, right? If yes. you really had this head-to-head this -head going up against each other, I think some key determining factors would be, first of all, Zaiwu's accuracy with the AWP. Because whether we like to talk about it or not, one of the main reasons why Saibu had out of this world performances recently as well is that he played a bit less with the AWP. He played more with the rifle. That yep. was also very meta and it was very fitting. And that's how he had ridiculous 2.6 plus rating like the first games of the RMR because he was mostly rifling. I, I do think that the way Spirit is playing, if you can post a very strong AWP that shuts down Donk as an entry, that's like already a super important step one. Is that so a concern for you though, Minya? Because I have to say, I'm, I, I was cool with that whole narrative of like, Zewu can do it all. So he does it rifling when they were winning. But I have to say, if they lose me, I really just want him back on the AWP. Like, I'm, are you are you in the same position? Like, if I had to choose if they play this series, I would want Zewu to AWP as much as possible because that's another fear I have is, mate, the actual way they've set Shiro up in that team, he's comfy as fuck, mate. He's in all his yeah. best, nice spots. He's doing stuff like, he's, he doesn't even go in first. Like, it's, it's like, the setup's really interesting. Yeah, so I would say these two are impossible to, to compare. Like the contrast could not be any starker. Oh, if you're a Shiro right now, you're you're in a super luxurious position where you get to play the AVP the way you want to because you have other players who are very comfortable in taking the space. And like Shiro has like a, a defensive, like punish type AWP is excellent at it. He's got excellent late round situations, super clutch. 
So right now, Shiro is sort of in paradise. Like he gets to play exactly what he wants, mostly. And then there's he doesn't really have to go out of his comfort zone. I think Zaiwu is the polar opposite. Like sometimes Zaiwu has to go out of the comfort zone to play with the AWP to overcompensate for structural issues and vitality that are happening, either from the calling, because the Katowice T side and some of the T side at the RMR was really iffy, not the kind of vitality that I like, or because you have individuals who aren't pulling their weight. And I think the Messi conversation is one that is very much going to be on the table very soon. So the problem that I have with Zaiwu is that he does not operate under the same kind of freedom as Shiro does in terms of, hey, what I want to do is this and I'm going to be comfortable in there. I think he has to go outside of that a little bit. And if he has, if he has to take the AWP when it's not his wish particularly, and then he misses a couple of shots, then yeah, that could get real bad. Like it could get really bad. That's like the, the worst case scenario. It's the nightmare scenario if you're a Vitality fan, which is why I personally would say, let him play whatever the fuck he wants. Like he needs a couple of so, rounds with the rifle. Just go at it. You want a couple of rounds with the rifle just to get in shape? Let's go. Because he, if you watch Saibu play and if you have a, a decent eye test to Counter-Strike, you feel that point where he, he switches in the game. And then from this moment on, all the upshots are hitting. Like yes. that's it. Like he's reached that point where he's got a couple of kills under the belt. He's, he's getting warmed up. The legs are stretched. And then every single AVP shot that has to be hit is hit. There's no miss. No sitter is wasted or whatever. Just let him warm up to that point. I think Vitality, I've had issue in the past where he wasn't allowed this sort of ramping up period. But he immediately had to pick up the AWP, immediately had to hit crazy, oh, not crazy, but instrumental shots that he would then possibly miss. And then it's a fucking, it's the avalanche that's starting, right? So if he can warm up into it and then be put on the AWP, I would like to see that. But something that you mentioned as well that is important is that the play style of spirit can also abuse individual weaknesses and liabilities. And... As far as I love Messi's debut, I think right now is a moment where we can start asking the question, okay, so where are we exactly stabilizing? You talked about pattern, like where is, where is the final pattern? We've been, we've been going up and down, left and right in a continuum from end of the last year, which was incredible, or rather world final was incredible, Copenhagen was weak, and then Katowice was weak again, so hold on a minute, like where, where is he landing? How can we trust in that? Um, I... I wish I could disagree with you, but I personally... Okay, no, I'm going to frame it differently. I think there is, a, there is unfortunately a chance that Vitality fuck it up in the elimination stage and a bad best of one or shit like that. And then if Vitality is down 0-2 because whatever, the day one was bad, I don't think they make it. I don't think they make the comeback. I don't think they have the strength, like the base overall to come back to it. But I will say if they survive the elimination stage and they go into the playoffs then I believe that only Spirit and FaZe can take them out of the playoffs. I don't, I don't think there's any other team right now that can, that can talk with Vitality once you are on the stage and you have survived the messy, whatever, Swiss system before that. If, you, if they get to Roll Arena, then it's Spirit or FaZe or nobody beats Vitality. No, I know what you mean. Like, put it this way, the, the world in which I could see them not performing well is, is like something like you get like a quarterfile draw in Spirit and then they just beat you yeah, yeah. and you lose. I will say on the Spirit yeah. one, obviously, I, especially at this point in their development, I am putting a giant asterisk that does say there is a world where a bunch of these players, the obvious ones would be Zontic or Donks. Just have a, have some underperformance. It doesn't even have to be a fail, guys. It doesn't have to be an even chalk. Just have a bad game or two. Like, especially, I'll, I'll put it more to the Zontic side, even though actually he looks like a pretty stable player. Player. She's just so inexperienced. And here's the thing, guys. At the end of the day, the reason I don't think Doc can truly fail is his skill level's insane. It's by the way, it's spoiler. It's the real reason why I always did say that I think Nico, Zewu, and Simple was the old grouping of the aliens compared to like the normal human players. Because a normal human player, like all of my son, they rise and fall. Like these players, like their version of failing, as we point out, is like a 1.2 rating, which mm. is a really good rating for normal human players. So that Doc can't really fail in that sense, or at least if he does, it'll be incredibly. Like, it'll almost be the biggest story of the fucking major at this point. Like, that's how huge it would be. So there is a world where I can't know that they will play, like, Katowice spirit, obviously. But, yeah, I actually do think that it's quite interesting. Meanwhile, on the Vitality side, I've got to say it, mate, I know people hate that narrative, but it is sort of true, even though Maui spawned it as a joke. I mean, he did it just for the Katowice one with the air quality, obviously. But it was to pick up on that point I'd made, which is that he just doesn't do as well in the big prestige tournaments. By the way, people have always missed this. It's never that he was bad. 
had, again, it's the difference between like a 1.4 rating and a 1.2 rating, but you've seen it happen a few times and you saw it and that was one of the things that kind of eats it. So I'll, I'll spin it the other way around. Since I, I'm, it doesn't have to all be negative, I'll put it this way. I do think Zewu has had some issue, especially when he felt pressured at these big prestige events to do the mega carry. By the way, on some level, everyone has. It's just I think it's a bit more noticeable for him because his skill level is so insane and his normal performance level is so above the rare level. But I will say this. I do actually think, though, if he does one of like the true Zewu runs where he has like fucking, you know, like 0.8 something KPR and he picks up the... I actually do think, it, essentially, if he plays like MVP, then Vitality will win the major. I think it's actually still totally plausible. Yeah. It's just for me, the reason why I'm not as in on Vitality is I do think they win actually a lot now by things like skill and people are sort of who are individually getting into the line. To me, they're actually not like a super duper coherent team. That's why I actually picked, like I said, Spirit to beat them because I feel like actually the Spirit system is what impresses me so much. Yeah. It's not dog, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think if you watch the last, let's just say you only look at Counter-Strike in 2024 and you compare the Counter-Strikes being played, then I think Spirit is more comprehensive and be more polished and... You know, there's less mistakes being made and it makes a bit more sense in like the trading and the spacing between players. I would argue Spirit play a better Counter-Strike, quote unquote, but it's really from like a, a purist angle where I'm just looking at basically a 2D perspective on how players are moving and uh, like how they're coordinating. I think Spirit is has got Vitality's number a little bit. Um, I have another angle, another take on the Go whole on. Zywoo winning and all. I think that we usually... By by focusing on the Zaiwu, by focusing on the simple, by focusing on whoever the MVP is, we usually fail to understand how titles usually don't depend on the peak of the MVP, oh, sure. but how high the floor is of the rest of the crew. And that is, I think, is a storyline that we miss because we get absorbed by, you know, how the champion is behaving. Sure. Oh, wow, simple is only having 1.2. Oh, Zaiwu is only have 1.15. Wow, that's washed. But then it's sort of it's sort of a smoke screen because if you really look at vitality and you look at the numbers when they are failures. How is nobody talking about Spinks, the fourth best player in the oh, world, sure. having like 0.9 rating? Yeah. Like, how are we expecting Vitality to win? And I, the problem that I have with this storyline is that when I put that forth, people will tell me I'm defending Zaiwu because I'm a fan of Zaiwu. That's it's not what I'm doing. I'm not saying that the Zaiwu we saw in Katowice was the MVP in Paris. Absolutely not. It was below that. That's a fact. But if you're looking for teams to win the big titles. It's it's never just one player. No, no. Sure, the MVP will have the MVP will have something an extraordinary performance. The same way Simple's run in Stockholm in twenty one is the stuff of magic. Like it's one forty plus rating. It's absolutely incredible. But guess what? Electronic and Bit are right behind him up there in the top six, top seven players rated of the event. When Zaiwu ties on everybody in Paris, Sphinx is right there with him. He's got an incredible rating. He's right there. And then Flames has a good final. This is where usually I think there is a bias where we miss that. Yes. If if you point out to me a game or a, a playoffs event where the rest of the Vitality crew is doing the job and Zaiwu is failing, then I will have no problem saying, yes, yeah, he fucked up. Like he, everybody was putting their weight and he fucked up. He had to do more than that. But the truth is also the rest of the cast sometimes, holy shit, disappears. And I, unfortunately, I have to agree with people. Sometimes Zaiwu doesn't really have the shoulders to fucking super hard mega carry the rest of the bunch. But also... Who does? Like in today's Counter-Strike, who does? Even Donk in Katowice, which had, I don't even know. I'm trying to find new words here. I need a Thesaurus, like 1.6 plus rating, whatever. He still had Shiro, who was very clutch in late round. And he had Zontix. That was an incredible anchoring as well on the CT side positions. He had like help, right? So this is where I, I struggle just a little bit with the Vitality camp right now. It's like, I don't really know how to gauge people's form. I think Spinks at the Arma was great. That's a positive. Flames still is a little bit of a coin flip to me. Like as the game is starting, I have to keep my eye on him thinking, okay, is it going to be the good flames or is it going to be the flames that disappears? Like which one are we getting right now? Because what he did in Paris, like, yeah, the, the second map of the grand finals, obviously, or no, the first map rather of the grand final is insane, but there is very little replicability to that. And then the Messi is the same conversation. Like which Messi are we going to get? Uh, when you hear from Apex, he seems to say it's map dependent right now. So cool. Okay, there are maps where he feels great. There are maps where he doesn't. And how are you supposed to win when he doesn't? Like that's that's the problem that I have with the Vitality camp right now. I feel like there are quite a few liabilities you can poke towards, and some factors would need to kind of coincide for them to win the major. No, I'm not saying it cannot happen. Of course not. I'll never say that. But there are definitely uh, weaknesses that, that that can be abused. I will say 
I do think the Zewu factor does allow... Put it this way, Spinks is the only player that people are going to tell me is top five in the whole world who's allowed to just have games where he does nothing. Like, mm-hmm. it is true. Because yep. the point is, because he has Zewu, he gets to win some of those games. Whereas I will say, if you want to take any of his rivals, so people like Rops, the other star riflers, like, the only, Joe, aside from Nico with Monacy, they don't have a player that just hard carries them through the game if they do, but they also have to be good themselves. Like, Rops can't be bad in phase. Like, the team's probably going to lose the game. You know, so... <laughs> I do think he, it is true. Some of the other players get to sort of s- slide by because everyone just looks at like the stats of Zewu went down in the match. But the difference is though, I do think as of right now, it's actually why the Donk angle, as I'll tease in a second, is interesting. Right now, if I have to pick one player who if they play at their peak level will have the most possible impact, it's Zewu, obviously. Like that's why I say, I really think like it's it's on him. If he actually has like a superlative major, I think he can win it for them and it, or make them like the clear leading factor in every match in theory. Because I just don't think there's any player can match up with him. Now, look, I'm going to obviously carve a tiny bit of space that <laughs> there's a world where maybe Donk can be that player. Yes. It would be cool if he was, by the way. There's another thing. I even think the timing, like we joked about on a past episode, is perfect. Imagine if Donk turns out to absolutely just be this player, which he has been so far. Zebu's amazing. And then Simple comes back for real. For real, we're in a game that has more seat. Like, that's when you things get really exciting, guys. Like, forget teams. Imagine having like four or five like super godlike players just battling each other for the supremacy. That would be pretty dope just in itself. Like, and yeah. also, by the way, it would really help considering CS2 is a new game that we have all these like big titanic figures again. I, I think the game's always at its best, Maniac. Because here's the part I'll, I, I'll tease a storyline you'll appreciate. I, I'll tell you something that people haven't done a good job messaging about CS2. I would absolutely, uh, the joke is, I'd almost do this like Valve I'd have all the teams come on like day one and show them like you know a projector film like this way I've made my thing like actually like Captain America like I'm a boomer in the 1940s like real to real like <laughs> now now troops sit down now man watch out this is the new thing about the major that you need to know about like but anyway I do I wouldn't really do that but I'd show them a video man. Like, what I'd explain to them is this Obviously, the the thing is, as we've discussed, everyone is treating this like this is CS t- Go 1.5. Like, it's just CS Go with a tweak, and we're still playing CS Go. We're not, though. We are playing CS2, guys. So what I would say is this. Think about how... If you were one of the latecomers to CSGO, even if you were amazing, like an example would be like a Shiro. I'm sorry, you didn't have the opportunity or the time to build your legacy of your name though. So even though like skill-wise, I would actually say in, in CSGO, like pretty swear, Shiro had enough years and was excellent. He probably was actually a better player, by the way, than Scream. Even though that might sound initially like, what the fuck? But here's why that even initially sounds like, what the fuck? Because Scream is a massive legacy name, guys. So my point here would be this. I'll tell you what's super hype if you're actually a younger player or new, like a Monacy type guy. Bro, this is your chance to become the Pashas and Screams and get rights of CS2. Because if you do that early, if in the first years you're like one of these giant figures that transcend, even Scream, his name definitely transcended the game, guys. He was one of the biggest. The, like I always say to this day, if I went to some random land in India, I guarantee they'll know fucking Pasha and Scream and Kenny S. They're might not know she wrote and fucking you know honestly they might not i'm afraid maybe they didn't watch those games but everyone knows those names those are like the right. achilles and fucking hectors and odysseus of their day so you you have a chance to it's not just a normal major either you have a chance to be that guy like not just donk there's a whole bunch of like young talents i feel like you've got a real chance to cook here mate and really like make like a huge name for yourself oh no definitely i mean there's never going to be any first cs2 major no no that is it like it's it's yeah. basically it's categorically like it, it is the only chance to be the first winner of the first CS2 majors, be the first MVP of the first CS2 majors forever, and no one can take that away from you. But uh, you you mentioned something about Simple Dog, and I had a question for you. I want to know your, your opinion. What is the most likely to happen? Don't cement, don't cement himself as one Come of the on. best players in the world, or Simple comes back in that conversation? What is the most likely Ooh. to happen? I mean, the most likely I'd have to go with the Donk, believe it or not. Like, here's okay, the funny yeah, thing. Yeah, I, exactly. I have actually sort of blue balls people because I, I actually was like everyone going to do my video about Donk like, right after kind of eight here. But the problem is, like, I have a problem with this sometimes. Sometimes I actually am a, I'm sort of a perfectionist, but sometimes I just keep thinking like, yeah, but if I look at more stuff, I'll get even more angles. And then you just you just wait too long, basically. But I will do one soon. Like, the basically, the point is, I do think like the eye test is an absolute, completely tick all the boxes. Because I actually think, believe Believe it or not, Maniac, a subtle point I keep making that people sometimes miss is it's actually the fact that he, like I told you, to me, the interesting thing about this guy's skill set is it's not that he has like, like he lacks like 
first bullet accurate. But he isn't one of those guys where, you know, some people, because I'd point this out years ago, it's like some people do overrate like just raw aim. Like essentially, if you have very good aim or skill, people will say he is a very good player. Whereas like maybe actually like, I mean, Boris would be a great example of this. He has amazing skill, but he's not actually a very good player. Like he's understanding the game, read. Like by the way, I would imagine someone like Boris probably not very good when his aim's not hitting that day. Probably don't think he probably has a, a B in a C game or a pivot or a way where he can play supportive stat. I imagine he probably just runs through the brick wall that day he dies the other day he gets through the brick wall just as a juggernaut style right the thought is there are players like that this guy isn't just that and not only that normally when people rave about like skill they just mean first bullet they mean like a guy did a three kit with like three one bullet headshots like holy shit or a guy did like a deagle clip you know where he just aces all the head and you're like what the fuck that's not even what Donk does the joke about Donk really is he actually does do like that Guardian meme from years ago he gets every single possible boring kill he never fails those ever by the way they are 100% a lock and then on top of that he has amazing spray and he could just get like extra he gets the extra kills you should never get from spray yes. where it's like you know that second one where you're supposed to do like one or two bullets but you die he just kills that guy as well so like I do actually think for real the, I do think the skill like the problem is this is what's fucked the donk narrative maniac I'll throw it to you after this is I just think no one can do the numbers any that he did it kind of eats it. I mean the joke is he no one had done it before he did he's he is literally the only one who's done it ever and he's only done it once so my problem is this that isn't even a reasonable expectation like you could like I said they could have won the event with him playing less he could have been the MVP with low numbers so I just think if people think it's going to be that every time that's probably impossible I don't think probably anyone could do that it almost has to be a perfect run like I would imagine at the major, he could be the MVP and have a bad game or one series that's a little bit more. But I do think it checks out. Like now, look, the reason why that you it's actually a tougher question that you asked me than people might realize is I am almost certain that if Simple truly actually wants to play and gets a team and isn't just going to be there for a month and then fuck off. If he's actually coming back for real, and especially because I know the simple grind, and the simple grind is fucking insane, guys. Like I, when he was at his peak in 2018, when we were all calling him the goat, he would still I would watch him on stream, bro. He would still grind on stream and on stream do shit like go into an empty server and just practice those like jumping no scopes for like 20 minutes. Like this guy's just built different. He really is. So it really is on his more like if he comes back, I guarantee he'll be good again. The difference is though, like right now there's almost no reason Donk wouldn't be this good. He actually just it checks out in my opinion. Mm, yeah, okay. I see, I see. I agree where are you at on that uh, one? Uh I like are you a bit he, skeptical about simple coming back? I am. I am I am skeptical. Uh I mean listen the, the, the best of three with Falcons, uh, the showdown, I couldn't give less shit. Right. Like, honestly, I, I don't right. care about it. I, I care absolutely not about it. But what I do think is that we might we might underrate how high the level is currently in like the top scene oh, compared sure. to, let's say, five years ago. Yeah. And so the, the role that Simple has ahead, if he wants to ever be considered one of yes. the three best players in the world, that's that's a tough road ahead. Like the candidates now at the very top are extremely hard to go yes. up against. Um, and then we are even sort of discussing like, okay, in what capacity is he going to come back? Is he going to be a rifle now? Is he going to be a main oper? Like, you're telling me now uh, with the main op, he's going to be better than Monacy, for example? I, I don't really think so. I think Monacy's completely embraced um, the Counter-Strike 2 itself, whereas, you know, Simple has to sort of claw his way back. As a rifle, I mean, what is really tantalizing about it is that he's in the starting block now. Like, I don't know what's the contractual situation with Navi is. I'm not really privy to that kind of information. But after the major, some people might actually start wondering, okay, like, do we consider simple? Do we consider as simple as a rifle, as a secondary sniper? Where can he go? Um, he's going to put a whole lot of pressure. He's going to be breathing everybody down, down everybody's neck, like, hey, I'm ready to take your spot. So that's going to be interesting. But with the donk angle, what I did want to say was that uh, just the numbers, like, it's a bit of a boring argument, but I think it's interesting. I originally I thought that the CS2 rating was skewed in any way compared to CSGO, but that actually not that's not what's happening. What's happening is that the sample size is smaller. So higher numbers have a higher impact, right? If you right. play 30 rounds and you have a certain amount of kills over 30 rounds, if you only play 20 rounds and you have a certain amount of kills, then the effect statistically yes. of a peak is gonna be greater. And sure. I think that's what's happening with CS2. So in essence, it's not impossible that he would ever have these numbers again. But it does mean that Spirit would have to win and he would have to farm the shit out of opponents to get up there. Um, I don't really think he's going to disappear, but it's almost impossible to, to maintain the numbers he had. Kind of and even worse, this is where we get to really test Spirit now. Because when they rocked up in Katowice, there was a little bit of hype about him. Right? I mean, we, we saw them in, uh, in the Dubai event. Obviously, he had already a whole lot of 
sort of legend around his name in the tier two. He was coming up and everyone was like, oh my God, Dong's going to be the next guy. Just beware of it. And then he, he came up and then we had all these narratives about, okay, when is, when is Dong going to fail? Oh shit, he's not failing. It's incredible. Wow. Now the conversation is a little different. Now you've already had your MVP in Katowice. You've destroyed everybody. You've set records or you tied up records with Nico in terms of like highest rating ever at an elite event. Now you're going to the major with an absolute demand for <coughs> performance. It's, this is not the same. Like if, if Spirit, let's just say Spirit fail, quote unquote, and just finish like, you know, they lose in quarterfinal or something like that happens. And he has an average, he has an average rating by his standards. Then if you consider the whole sample size of what we saw on CS2, then someone could actually make the argument of saying, yeah, maybe that was a flash in the pan. You know, maybe he's just going to be a great player, but he's not going to be the next greatest because the way it started in CS2, I was watching him in Katowice and I thought he's in a different level than Zaiwu. Like when I watched him play at what peak, I thought like this is this is something new. This is something that I have never seen before. Like this this the the mix of aggression and spray control is so unique because usually good sprayers are good defensively. Yes, like it's he, true. He's he's a good sprayer aggressively. Like what the, yes. what is what is this? How can he how can he master movement and counter strafe and aim and like counter aiming when he's got it to do the way he's doing it? That's why he keeps on he keeps his mobility and he's he can just enter sides. I have never seen someone who can do that with the rifle. I think Zawu is pretty close, but he's a bit more I would say headshot oriented probably. Although Dong's headshot percentage is actually pretty high, but I agree with you with the spray. So I've never seen someone do it the way he does it, and. Obviously, he's going to be one of the craziest, most tantalizing storylines rocking up in Copenhagen. Oof, holy shit. I would like to see him against Vitality. Here's what's sad. It's why I actually sort of know that even though everyone who's a Donk fan said after Kanavitsa, like, see, I told you, he is just different. He can do it even when, you know, you all, yeah, I know the normal rules. Are you supposed to fail when it's your big stage? But he's just different, guys. I'll notice those people, meaning I could pretty quiet right now. Have you noticed that? They, they're kind of like, it's almost like they're doing that, like, they're just like, it's like poker and they don't want to go all in again. They're like, oh, I'm, no, 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 I'm no. cool with yeah, my yeah. Katowice. <laughs> and you know what? I'll tell you what, I'll play and let's maybe have like a semis at the major, but that's all fine though, because we still want Katowice. With the, it's like, no, no, because that's the thing, Maniac. This is why, by the way, actually, I didn't know he was going to do it, but you know, I made, I made a point on um, Steak and Banter, I think it was, a few uh, like months ago, actually, when the Donk hype first started. And I said, please don't overhype Donk um, in terms of like, don't treat him like he has to be Zewu from day one because I actually think that's unfair to anyone. I actually think, by the way, it was unfair to Zewu when they did that to him. Like, when the first year he came along, he mm -hmm. took a few months to get going too, guys, and he had big games that he was having problems with because he wasn't simple. Like, he hadn't played all those years. He was in the like, first, first year as a pro. So, I can't, the reason I said that is because I was obviously worried that, like, people would make the expectations too high and then the joke is we would be, like, flaming them when actually, if you look at the normal way you track as you go along as a beginner, it'd be totally, in fact, he'd be better than normal, wouldn't he? I do think this is the angle people do ask, but it has to be asked because of the win at Canavitze, which is, right, I gave the analogy before Maniac, right? So you know in the first classic Matrix movie, everyone remembers it from like 1999 or whatever, and obviously there's that scene where when, Ma Ma when Neo goes into the real world and he's on the Nebuchadnezzar or whatever, like they use that thing where they put him into the Matrix in like a test simulation, he does that test jump, you remember? He has to learn yes. how to jump across the buildings, because yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what he has to learn is that the concept of gravity in the Matrix is in your mind, and you can just defy it if you really believe. But the point they make is you have to really believe it and the notion they're showing is famously because even Neo the chosen one actually fails doesn't he and what they say is they go no one makes the first jump and what their point is is it's not even about your ability level the point is in that moment no one saw it. this makes a lot of sense by the way I, I, you even like this psychologically it even makes a lot of sense in terms of how humans are because actually that is one of the things about how humans develop is you don't have a strong sense of identity when you're a child that's part of why you're weak when you're it's not just that you're small and can't fight people it's that you wouldn't have for example the self identity to say something like, hey, stop doing this to me. You don't have a right to do it. Hey, I am my own person. I don't care what you think. Like These are all things an adult thinks when they become a fully formed person who's been through experiences, ups and downs. So the problem is, it is totally logical that no great player should actually win their first major. I mean, if you look, the actual interesting thing about CSGO is a lot of the best individual stars took a long time to win their oh, first major. You know, yeah, they were often on these teams where they had to hard carry. If you look at the ones that win really early, they tend to be on a very stacked team or a team with amazing 
amazing balance, like the Fanatics and the uh, and well, all the Fanatic lineups, NIP, etc. Like these aren't squads right, that just right. one guy. Yes, yeah, Charles, these there's not one guy carrying. So I will say, like normal, I'm supposed to say I don't expect Donk to win his first major, but it's plausible. And holy fuck, if he did, boys! Like again, it doesn't have to do one point five rating. If he just wins his first major, he's the MVP. Now, 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 I will actually tell you this: all the hype is on the table at that point in time, mate. Like all the, even though before I'd always tell you, whoa, 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 guys, can't get, let's just give it time. No, actually, at that point, fuck, give it time. We can go to fifth gear and let's just yep. fuck the brakes. You know what I mean? At that point, no, mate, right. he, we should start tracking him to be like the goat of all CS. So it'd be true. I mean, <laughs> if, he, so if he wins, if he wins the major, I think you can already have the conversation for best player of twenty twenty four. Like it's already there. Sure. Like, you've, you've had Kadavita as an MVP. You win the major, you're probably MVP. You've basically snatched two of the highest most prestigious event you can in the year i mean that's it you've probably already put your name in the first ballot um yeah i I love the like the psychological aspect to it because that's also something that i think his team has to be wary of is that the hype the post hype of katowice and what it meant for them and what it meant for him to win katowice to be this prodigy whatever term people are using to to sort of describe dong like how do you deal with that because i'm gonna tell you the loss against mouse at the rmr I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna exaggerate. I'm gonna. Over, I'm not gonna overreact sure. to it. Like it's. It's okay. It can happen to anybody. That's fine. But let's keep an eye on whether it's happening here and there again. Because by his metric, this was a failure. Like you have a no point oh, eight sure, yeah. eight rating by his metric, yep. it is a failure, and it means Spirit is losing. So now I, I do wonder how he's. I, I, I said something at the desk. I said I hope this this guy. We're gonna shield this guy from from everything that's happening around it. Because he had such a such an innocence in Katowice about you know what I'm just here to play Counter Strike I'm having a good time we have we I, I love this team we're all good together we appreciate it let's do this and it was so genuine and now whether you want it or not there's going to be a whole lot of talk that get through your head like oh you could be the next goat you could be the best player in the world but what if you win your major now hey you're coming in as an MVP of Katowice hey can you do it oh we're ready to see you fail oh wait one a minute Donk is washed that was a one time so. It, Honestly, like there's so many so, voices that can get into your head when yes. you're in that position. Where, yeah, if he actually pulls up a Katowice in Copenhagen, this like this would be logic defying, like logic defying that a yes. player of this age in that step actually handles all of the I want to call them emotional challenges, whatever you want to name it, like psychological psychological warfare you have to go through to perform in Copenhagen at the level he did in Katowice. Holy hell. I mean, at this point, even I, I would have to convert, right? I mean, I'm kind of already converted anyway, but yeah, I would, I would have to buy a jersey, right? Buy a donk jersey. By the way, two things. One is that's also why I'm actually sort of like, that's essentially the only area I still hold a little bit of doubt about donk is, like I say, no one's ever really just had a perfect, like, essentially, he'd have to have the, it's not just even skill mania, he'd have to have the craziest mental fortitude maybe ever in Counter-Strike to never, mm-hmm. ever buckle in this way. Because, like, part of me is sort of waiting for just, like, the mouse one was one, but it's just on a smaller scale. I'm kind of, this, I'm sort of waiting for this at the major. Hopefully, maybe it's just in a Swiss system. Just have a bad game. Just a normal mm-hmm. bad game that any player can have, and then come right back and be awesome, and it's cool. You'll show us some mortality, but then we'll know you actually are the guy. Because that's the only problem. Because it still hasn't been enough sample size, Maniac. I'm with you on that one. Here's the problem. Problem. But I I know this will sound weird, but the thing I would have been more confident in a fucked up way if when Don could won in all those interviews, he came off like a very brash, incredibly confident figure. Like, yeah, I kind of I'm always I am the best already, you know, Z and simple where you are, come at me or something. If he did done that in a weird way, I'd be more assured because here's the problem. His w- response, no joke, made it feel maniac. And listen, I'm obviously speculating. I'm trying to read the guy's mind, literally, and he is a Russian kid that I don't know and have never talked to. So I'll put that disclaimer out there. But the way he answered after he won made it seem to me for real like he hadn't processed what had happened. Like like yeah. that he didn't still understand that he'd just gone to the biggest line in the world at the time and dominated everyone, including the best players, and just beaten like Carrigan and fucking Faze Clan. Like and part of me just felt like he hadn't realized it yet. So unfortunately, Maniac, I kind of have the vibe that like essentially he's Wiley Coyote chasing the roadrunner and he's come off the cliff, but he hasn't yeah. looked down yet. So I just want to know what happens the moment he looks down, because that's the thing. I don't think the RMR is enough pressure really for anyone to truly be like he's watched. Like, they might have said that on HL TV forums, but he got, they got through the RMR, guys. It was just one of fucking course. series. And also, like we said, they might just go win the major now, but I, tell, I just want to see what happens when that moment happens, essentially when he looks down in the analogy 
I want to see what happens when he looks down at the major. And the second point I'll just throw out there is, this is low key. Look, I didn't make this happen, guys. I'm just enjoying the schadenfreude of it all. If you are the Ziwoo fanatics out there, obviously you were all ready to just chill back in a hammock this year. Like, lol, Simple doesn't even play. <laughs> and we're just going to walk to that number one title. It's going to be brilliant. Four, four number ones. And then it's like, and then now I'm like, listen, I didn't do this, but it, it is interesting how life works out, isn't it? It's funny life, isn't it? It almost mm. has a sense of humor of fate does because the joke is it's just thrown up some super phenomenon no one could ever have seen coming like the joke the analogy here would be if you've been watching Dune it's like we all thought this was the normal scenario of who's in power and who's not and then the fucking Kwisatz Haderach just comes along and then it's like well that's game over then I guess that's it every one of our narratives is thrown out the window this one guy just bends all of time and space and history to do whatever he wants because that'll be the most interesting part to me because I do think you're right if Don was to be the MVP of this kind of eats here at this major, after Kanavitsa, which is the other big one. Mate, Zero would have to go fucking bonkers yes. to get number one at the end of the year. Even though, like, even though, look, he's got, he could do it, obviously. It's just, yeah. people keep forgetting. There's not that many tournaments in CS now. Like, guys, for real, there's, for, like, in terms of the tournaments that matter, there's about, like, six. There's about six for real, guys. The rest are just sort of, like, lands that we watch for entertainment. Like, we just get out, oh, that's cool, just that random IEM. Like, there's about six really big tournaments. If this guy's won two already, Zero's going to have to basically dominate the rest of the year. I know, but if you're if you're a real Zero fan, if you're a real you I believe it's possible, though. Yeah, exactly. I'm not yeah. talking about just like cloud chasing and just, no, you know, no. having having yes. the name of the guy that's winning. But if you're a real Zaiwu fan, you want him to have his fourth number one year with a rivalry that is worth Oh, watching. for sure. Yes. That's what you want. Yes. That's what you want. Because if, if, if Donk hadn't existed and Zaiwu had just run over 2024 because Simple is pedestrian and Nico is still average compared to his own standard, then you could very much do the argument of saying, hey, listen, there was no competition that year. Like that number one means a little bit less, you know, like nobody was there to challenge him. That was just like, ah, he was average. No, 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 no. If you're a real Zaiwu fan, you want him to, to take it off the claws of Donk, the extraterrestrial being coming over that's what you want as a Zaiwu fan. You want him to have to work for it, to earn it, and that this fourth title as best player in the world is actually earned. So guys out there, the fans, you have to look at it long term. You have to look at the big picture. Don't just think about the titles your player is going to get. Think about how he's going to get it, yes. the fame that comes with it, the legends that come with it, the lore of it. That That's what matters. And that's why at the end of this year, if Donk has an incredible year and Zaiwu still is number one, then the, the, the magnitude of what he takes is completely yes. different. And that that's how you are a real fan of a player. You wish for him to go through the hardships and earn what he's getting, not just being like handed titles yes. and shit. Like, we don't want any of that. It's why actually low key, that's actually what shows me, in my opinion, Maniac, the difference between being a stan, as in you're almost like a K-pop fan who just likes, you have some weird parasocial relationship with the personality of the person you think they're your friend or someone that you would like. You know, all that weird thing, like, I'd love to have a beer with him. It's like, I'm talking about fucking video game players myself, but it's not who I'd like to have beverages with and talk about life with or something. So I will say that the difference, in my opinion, between someone who admires like the excellence of the player and someone who's just a fan of what they think that person's like, like a boy band, is... Mate, if you're a true Zwu fan, surely your favorite years are the ones where it was him and Zwu, him and Simple at their peak, going head to head like Messi Ronaldo. Isn't that way cooler than when your guy wins? Like I've always thought this. It's one of the areas I'm a bit different. People might think I'm like biased to people like Carrigan. I wouldn't want Carrigan to actually just win a tournament easily, guys. That doesn't mean anything. If I like Carrigan, I want to actually see is he the greatest of all time. So that means actually I want him to face Prime Astralis and then fucking Vitality and then I want him to face all the best teams because that way if he then is the one who wins like we say the accomplishment is fucking goated isn't it then we all win and by the way spoiler the, the other reason why you want that as well is then even if your guy doesn't win we watch the greatest fucking count strike of all time don't we like because the point here would be I actually think that's in fact there, here's the interest I found my way to, I, I kept talking till I found my way there so here's the narrative I'm going to end this point on then we'll move on which goes like this you know that whole thing that Zewu has done for the last four years which goes like this whenever someone asks him because because it's just the nature when you're in a godlike rivalry like this, like Messi Ronaldo, people are constantly going to ask you in interviews about the other guy, aren't they? It's going to be on almost every interview is the point like Messi Ronaldo had to have. So they're going to ask you if you're Zewu. Obviously, the question is, like, well, Simple was number one last year. What do you think about this? And, and is he your rival? And are you better? They're going to ask you that question one million times, right? So one of the ways that Zewu tries to address that, this is in my opinion, his tactic, is his tactic is sort of like, 
I'm not for because he's not a super, in theory, uh, selfish person. His sort of whole take is sort of like, well, since I don't focus on myself, I'm not focused specifically just on simple. I'm just trying to help my team. I'm trying to win. You know, he's on Nav when he was on Navi. He's on Navi trying to make his team win. And, you know, we're just sort of good players. And I don't think of it as a rivalry, which is a cool angle, by the way. But here's the other thing. That works way better when you're the one that come recently and you're the one that's dominating now and you're winning. You can say that. But here's the problem. Low key, if that's true, z you need to get the simple angle of like, hey, wait, who's this fucking guy that everyone says is good to me? Are is my rival and I'm going to beat him because actually you're going to need that if dog comes mate like at this point like I say the jo- if anything the real joke here's the most gangster one of all and people who know tennis you'll know this one this is the analogy you remember back in the day maniac long before fucking Serbian Djokovic won the, the Grand Slams it was Federer and Nadal right and you'll remember bro no one hated each other more than Federer and Nadal fans the whole thing was constant yes. backbiting it was like yeah well Federer chokes on clear and it was like no but you know fuck, Nadal's like abusing the timeouts he, you know, maybe he's on steroids people were doing they were going so hard but I'll tell you what boys when Djokovic started winning those two fan bases became like fucking like <laughs> the enemy of my enemy is my friend they like joined do you remember this when the initial it was like they joined and their whole thing was just like the new banner was like fuck Djokovic and then their whole <laughs> shit was like it was our guys who were the best if you're a simple and Zimu fan all I'm saying is light the fucking beacons of whatever it was Gondor and Lord of the Rings we need to get them both together we need to all join up to defeat Donk because at this point he's like Thanos or something isn't he like, we have to stop this fucking guy come on boys <laughs> Let's yeah. all get to our best to beat him. Okay, I, I like that angle. Yeah, I guess we do. We, in fact, as a Zaibu fan, you need simple to come back. You do. So we can control Dom. Yeah, you need, you exactly. Need to come back. And yeah. also, low key, you need it because that way, then if Zaibu has a great game, we knock him out in the upper bracket in an IEM. Then in simple can knock him out in the lower bracket. <laughs> then he stops winning the events. Together, together, guys, we can rule the universe. That's all I'm saying. If we just join together. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's where we are now. Let's pivot, because I'll tell you what, I've got a pivot for you, right? Oh, actually, it's your okay. turn. Pick a team. Pick a team. All right, my turn. I wanted to talk about phase, and my angle for phase is the following. Even if the numbers seem to point towards Frozen's integration being awesome, and he's delivering on all the promises, I'm going to make the point that I think he hasn't pushed any of the boundaries that were his before. Ooh. Any of the limits and the ceilings that we were talking about Frozen in mouse have not yet been pushed in phase. That's my point. I think he's delivering... I think he's doing great. By the numbers, you look at the stats. Katowice, the whole year since he's joined, he's the highest performing player. So great. At face value, you think, holy shit, like this is an incredible recruitment. Everything is going well. I think he's only been doing what we know Frozen can do. I think there is still a step to be made. If you really look under the microscope and you look at the grand final against Spirit, I know it's not just Frozen. I'm not an idiot. I realize that. But we were far from the superstar Frozen performance. If you look at the loss against G2 at the RMR, we are looking at a very average Frozen that is much below and much calmer than what he usually does. So what I'm feeling is that whatever limitations or possible limitations or obstacles or whatever higher ceiling you wanted to talk about in mouse, I haven't seen that being pierced through in phase. It's yet to be seen. Although the numbers might suggest that he's doing perfectly, I think for now, he's just doing what he can do and what we know he can do. And there is still a step to be made for Frozen in phase. By the way, I do agree with you, but I will I will t- explain with a little bit of extra context, which is one of the battles on Snake and Banter for many years was this whole thing, because they used to play together and then separately, of Frozen and Rops, right? Because what Maui did, which to be fair, we all do it as analysts, but this, I'm just expressly breaking the fourth wall so fans understand this, is as an analyst, another thing you'll do is you pick a player, especially when they're an up-and-coming player, and then if most other people are sort of like, yeah, he's just good, and you think they have a little something special, you kind of become their champion in a way you champion them on broad you put, but I think this guy like, I've done it my fast part I'm the jokes I've done it people like simple but that that's a more obvious but I mean it's usually when it's more of an age pick like this you have one player you think on the side's a little bit special you know and you big them up right Maui's obviously riding with this player with Frozen much like he rode with the Akinda these are the players he's picked to go up with my problem was always this I always used to essentially this is where I was kind of on sort of my my fucking big brother shit I was always sort of telling Maui like Pat on the head. That's cute that you think there is good, but like Rops is on another level. You know what I mean? Like Frost is really good. Don't get me wrong. For talking rifles, top ten. The difference is Rops. Rops can be the best. Whereas for me, Frozen was always like one little cut below that. And on Mouse, quite frankly, I did always wonder. 
mate, on this particular team, remember by the end, guys, he's playing with all fucking academy players and people who were like, like the joke about the Infat guy is his most famous thing when he joined Mouse was he was someone else's brother. That's like, it's not like this guy was playing with a superstar team. Like Mouse was just Frozen's world. And I'm going to go ahead and guess he got whatever he fucking wanted in Frozen's world. So I also was a tiny bit actually apprehensive of him going to fades, which is like, what happens when you go to another team? Because you're not going to get everything you want. You know, you know, at the same time, you don't have to necessarily, but I'm with you. The hope when he joins FaZe is that he goes another slight level up. He takes the last jump and he becomes like the top five player. And then, by the way, then FaZe would be so powerful. They could, they could win everything. They could have an era, of course, yeah. The problem, I'm, I'm with you, he's never done that so far. He hasn't been bad, which is why I think he's got away with it. And obviously, they made all these finals. So it looks like, oh, don't worry, just bedding him in still. But I'm with you. I actually haven't seen like that next level. of Like, put it this way, when Rops went from Mouse to FaZe, you saw him sort of like, it's almost like that meme of, you know, where they're playing PlayStation and they're sat back like this. But then when it's... It's like the important like, yeah. one one at FIFA. It like Rops did that when he came to FaZe, didn't he? And that's when they suddenly became like super good. The problem I have with Frozen is he hasn't done that. And in fact, I'll even go kind of to what you were alluding to. Mate, in a bunch of these finals they've lost, I've sort of been waiting like any minute now. He's gonna have a pop-off map. It's never happened. I've been waiting, it's never happened yet. Like, because I'm thinking to myself, dude. I'll, t I'll give a very fair contrast. I've been very critical of people like Flames in the past. Flames has done that. Flames has yep, had the one maps fair. in each big map. He'll have that big half where he'll just put you over the top. Might not consistently be the best, but he will do that. I just haven't seen it from Frozen yet. I even yep. do feel like low-key because I've been watching his vibe when he's on the events. I feel like he actually is a, a little bit He's not uncomfortable, but he's not totally comfortable yet in phase to me. I feel like he's still like... Because the other thing that sometimes happens, Maniac, when you go to the big team, when you've been in the small team, I mean, you'll know this is a pro, is when you arrive... Whereas in Mouse, you were the big fish. You're not gonna, you're not even going to have the same attitude in that sense. You're going to be more sort of like, hey, like, you know, let's not rock the boat too much. Like, let me get myself settled. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I don't demand too much. Maybe if things are going not that well, maybe I just take it on the chin initially because I don't want to seem like a whiner or what. I don't want to, oh, I don't want to take like reins. What, you know what I mean? There's so many extra things to think about when you come to these teams. I, I think he's still working it out, mate. Because yeah. that's the one thing about FaZe is it's definitely not like... This is why they're a, a, a tricky team to analyze, in my opinion. They're the only team where it feels like there are only like two teams can beat them. The problem is those are probably the teams you're going to beat. They'll stop you yeah. in the major. You know what I Fair mean? Fair enough. <laughs> I know. And listen, I want to be clear. This is not an indictment on. No, Frozen. no. I'm not, no, I'm not no. saying this is a failure, and sure. it's no, absolutely not. And I'm ready to give him the time to get comfortable in that position in phase and to possibly blossom into one of the five yes. best players in the world. I just think we. Some people were too fast at using that moniker for him, and he yes. hasn't really deserved it quite yet. Yes. I will also say, though, uh, just to counter your point as well, is that he has been given a whole lot of roles that he wanted. And, sure. and probably not because he came in with, like, big shoes and just said, hey, listen, guys, this guy is going to work out. No, I just think on FaZe's side, they wanted to make him as comfortable as possible. Sure. And he's gotten some of these positions. You think about Overpass, for example. Rain is playing B anchor. Like, Rain is playing B anchor on Overpass. Like, Rain famously was a trendsetter for how a rifle aggressive on overpass could be yep. played. Like, he for years and years and years, he was the most aggressive guy you could find out there. He was gonna, he's defying the rules of how far on the map you can be, and he was doing an incredible job at this. So now, Frozen has some of these roles. That is, on the plus side, that's great. The, the other side of that coin is it comes with responsibility. Like, brother, you cannot have a calm, quiet, passive half on the CD side of Overpass. If you are the rifle up there, you have responsibilities. There are expectations. You have to take space. You have to be out there. You have to take duels. You have to multi-kill. So in order for FaZe to win events, they need him to deliver in these positions that he's been granted. And it's not, you, you cannot just be in the backpack having a good time because he's got like fitter roles and all you need is a kid and a half and we're going to move on. No, 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 no. No, you need, you need multi-kills. And if you're looking at the grand finals when they don't win, sometimes it's down to him not getting that multi-kill. This is not a one-and-done position that the, he's usually playing. He's playing in multi-kill spot on the city side. So I will give him the time. It is fine. I just don't think we should use the uh, goddamn fireworks quite yet. Like, he's done well. He's warmed up to it. He's got great delivery on some of the sort of lower importance matchups, and he can farm the shit out of people. Of course he can. He's a very skilled player, and he's also got a great game sense. But, you know, I'm still... I'm left wanting. Like, whatever was promised... Uh, for Frozen or what he could become in phase, still to be happening.
I will also say as well, just in terms of the like psychological framing I was setting up there, the other reason why I have to like wait to see him do it, Maniac, and actually show me that like essentially, because here's the analogy I would give. I do feel like, even though the Joker's twists has looked actually pretty good in Team Liquid, so actually if anything, he's, people, he's making people remember that he was a good player. But even so, twists wasn't the guy who was putting up the big numbers at the end in phase. So I think some people also haven't bothered criticizing Frozen because they see it as like, well, he's, he's, he's as good as twists was when he was here. But that's not, in my opinion, what he's here to do, mate. Like, when I saw him join this team, like you say, and he's played with Carrigan, and he has some, definitely has some of the roles that he had in Mouts. I actually see it as, like, he's supposed to be the Sphinx to face. Like, mm -hmm. he's supposed to come and be a star player, and then they're supposed to win everything. That's how he's supposed to, like, complete, like, have, like I guess, have an era or some crazy shit. And the problem I do think he has so far is this. When you are that big fish in the small pond on Mouse, you don't get the blame when you lose the game. Because uh, first of all, with your roles and your team, odds are you aren't ever going to be the bottom fragger. You'll probably just be like, in fact, you might even be the top fragger, obviously. But I will tell you, that is one area where I do sometimes think people like Simple, they sound like they're being too harsh on themselves in an interview, but in a way they're actually being fair. You know, sometimes you'll see a player like that drop like a 35 bomb or something, but then they'll be critical when they lose. And they'll be like, yeah, we didn't do enough. And you'll think, come on, mate, you were amazing. But to be fair, they might mean like, yeah, I dropped like a 35, but maybe there was like two massive key rounds I fucked up. Maybe like I fucked up a com with a guy and someone got through or I didn't rotate and I was slow to the site. And so I, in my mind, I just know, look, that is a round I could have won. And would it I do think that's the difference is he could get away with a lot of that shit in mouse in this team. If you're in fears, it's like B and Z moving by time. Every game you're going to be scrutinized. You can only win. You have to win the game or it's, so, someone's going to be to blame because when you have this much potential, justifiably, by the way, people will say, why aren't you winning the championship? Like, this is like being one of the best football teams in the world that spent all the money on the transfers and has all the stars and the players. You've got to win at that point in time. It's not good, it's not good enough to be like, yeah, but with the third, that's pretty good. There isn't pretty good for teams like FaZe. But actually, by the way, this is one thing I thought's always cool about the FaZe project. That's why I like about FaZe, though, is because it's now become, instead of a retirement, home it's actually become the ultimate destination to try and win championships that 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 is actually the normal expectation it's why by the way a carrigan can cry when he loses Kadavitz here to possibly like the best performance any one player ever did because he knows that like hey we're supposed to win in phase this is a team to win championships so i actually end up essentially what i'd say to wrap that point up is i am actually glad that frozen's on this hot seat though i actually want players like that to be properly tested because like i said before you can get to look like you're like 95 percent of rops if you're on a mouse and there isn't the pressure and you don't even have to win the tournament but the difference is a Rops has to do that and then win the tournament and that's different that is a, that is a level of pay grade and status that we, we're always going to give you extra credit if you're that guy I'm afraid it's why I always tell those other players even if they give you a great contract if it really is a choice between like go to a team where you can win the championship and just get slightly more money just do the championship one mate come on maybe later in your career you take the easy money but just come on everyone, there's only so many windows you get to win championships I've got a pivot for you is anything else all on right. face? Should we do a pivot? No, I'm all good. We can wrap. Right. Because by the way, I do think low key, the torture for me with Faze, very simply, is like I said, I do think the flaw is really, really good. I mean, they even have a really strong map pool if you don't look guys. The problem is, it's just we can all in our brain because we've seen it. Imagine Spirit of Vitality beating them head to head. We've seen it. We've just seen it, guys. So until I know that, that doesn't happen, it's hard to say they're going to win. Even though I do think low key, that the joke is they're probably the biggest favorite to make it deep, like to make the final. They probably score, are. Right? Yeah, yeah. They probably <laughs> are. So it's kind of foot court. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pivot because I'm going to frame this very carefully. I always thought one thing I never got credit for on the desk was this maniac is I don't just come out and spew random points like I always have a specific angle that it's obvious I'm going on and I always set it up in a way where this is actually why me and Yanko always worked well together he essentially he will then just pick one of the topics I've done to connect his point into and it gives you a way to segue it very cleanly so what I'll do is I'll frame it this way I want to talk now maniac about cloud nine but I'm going to use the type of framing that is a really good analytical point but if you're a cloud nine fan it's probably going to really hurt your feelings because it goes like this I actually actually think for real maniac this is one of those dark horses that could make the playoffs but that would be the worst thing that could happen to cloud nine organization because bro the problem i have with this team and i want to make this very clear because i've been talking about this on a lot of my shows is you know how we were all super hyped when they first made the squad when they had shiro 
But then eventually, obviously, when they didn't have the Orpa, we've all sort of been like, ah, I mean, I'm still sort of in, but ah, until they fix that problem, though, you know, it, it's nagging. It feels like, ah, until that problem's fixed, though, I can't properly get all in on Cloud9. Right? The issue is this. Most people have gone completely the other way, where because it is one of the rare times there's an obvious problem, you don't have one of the guns in the game that still is important and plays a role, everyone can then go, ah, well, who cares about Cloud9? No, 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 that's where you've gone wrong, guys. That's the worst thing about Cloud9, is they're right on the fucking cusp. Even without the AWPA, that's why the AWPA angle is so infuriating because you feel like, like it doesn't even have to be a top AWPA. Just get an all right AWPA and you feel like this team could win tomorrow. Because the thing is, man, what kills me about this squad is they actually show that you do need an AWPA because they come this close to winning against everyone. They actually mm. show that, like, they. And if you watch them, we talked about this on Snake and Bunny, it's not even like they have a pop off Mega. Electronic isn't doing like donk shit, boys. If anything, it even is like they've got sort of like an interesting mix of players who sort of are working together in their own way because they just lack that obvious tool in the game of the AWP though, that is going to stop them winning. Like, the point is, I could see a world easily where this team could make top eight, but then they just they yes. can't win the major. That's the problem. They can't. Like, they definitely go to have a series where, even if it's close, they will lose because I'll tell you what, mate, it's the reason why historically the AWP is understandably the weapon that the person who's the top-ranked player gets to use, not the rifle. Because, like, my joke is, I made this joke on Snake and Banter, but as a team, the joke is, just like any M4A4 player knows, you hit do three bullets for 99 damage and then the guy lives. That's the analogy of what Cloud9 the team does. Where's the AWP? You either kill him or you don't, don't you? So if you get that shot, yeah. So my problem basically, Maniac, is even when this team does like hit its peak, it's it's lacking a very key weapon. So the problem is, like I say, I actually think it would be better for them not to make top eight so they're forced to just, you know, fucking go all in, get an AWP uh, and refigure it. Because at the moment, it's like the reason it's nightmare fuel for me is they're too good for a team that is flawed, but they're not good enough to win. And I think that's the worst spot to be know, in the I game, know if you mean. know what I mean. Yeah, Because you could I easily I... fool yourself and keep going if you're in that spot, I feel I, like. You could just watch cannot... every VOD and go, oh, we were so close. What about this round? You could easily do it, I think. I, can't, I cannot imagine what type of result. No, actually, I know. I think they would need, at the very least, a semi-final to fool themselves enough to think that this is functional or they can actually have success together. I think this is how high they would have to go in Copenhagen to even discuss or second guess the idea that a change has to be happening. Because I feel like the communication coming in from the Cloud9 camp for quite a while has been, well, listen, the major is coming and we're going to make do with what we have and that's it. We're, we're going to make it work. We're going to make it they, work. Have you noticed the, the tone they use in interviews? They don't seem bothered. The joke is they're like no. the only people who don't think this is an issue it seems like, right? Well, I, don't, I don't really know if it's like just like coping mechanism or just they're trying to make the it best was. of what they have and they just realize it doesn't bring them anything to just cry about it on an interview. So they just said, fuck it, you know what? Copenhagen is coming. This is a team that we have. Let's make it work in in a sense i can appreciate it because it doesn't really bring you anywhere to just cry about oh, it sure. so now you're at the major now again bar a top four finish and above i cannot see a world in which they consciously make the choice of keeping this roster as is moving further into 2024 i cannot understand that i would not understand that and i would be very pissed about it um what i will give them and why i think like a playoff birth could be possible is that in terms of having men, not boys, like men who are mentally ready to go to battle and fight through a game that is a little bit messy and rounds are being lost and some shit is going on. And we know they can be quite like abrasive and emotional. Like we know how it is in the CIS Counter-Strike, but believe you me, they're ready to fight. Like they're ready to fight. They're, they'll they'll push you. Even if you think that they're down or whatever, I would never count them out. So I think because of how specific the major is as an event, and when you have players like Perfecto, like Electronic, like Hobby to a sense, I wouldn't easily just bet against them. Like, I think the elimination stage is a slam dunk for them. And then even then, they're not going to be a team that people are happy to play against. But the real question for me is, who do you remove after the major? And at that game, I have a, a little bit of a special take is that okay. if you ask me, do you think Axile is a stronger player than Hobbit? My answer is probably going to be yes. I think Axile is a stronger player. But in the role that Cloud9 need in order to perform, you should keep Hobbit. If I'm the GM, it is Hobbit I'm trusting with these roles because I think what he can provide with very little resources and very little freedom and some of these like shadowy whatever field roles, I think he does it to a better extent than Axile. And I think he's stronger mentally than Axile. I think he can deal with these games. He can deal with the, I have three kills after a whole fucking half because nobody came to the B site and then suddenly the next half I have to have a double kill in the pistol round. I think he can deal with that better than Axile. 
Axide would be better off in a different team where he gets superstar positions and he, he gets to utilize his skill, which to the eye test, he obviously has a higher skill set than Hobbit. We've all oh, seen course, him play. Yes. Nobody's going to challenge that. But I just cannot think that Axel can thrive in the position that Cloud9 need him to be in. So if I'm in charge in Cloud9, I'm trusting Hobbit to be that, that position. You have Hobbit and Perfecto who can sort of stabilize the map. You have Electronic to whom you give the maximum space you possibly can. You bring in a good upper, boom, that's it. And I know it's counterintuitive because people could say, but Axel is better than Hobbit. That's short-sighted. Think about what the team needs. And for me, it's always been, or it almost has always been Hobbit that should retain the jersey. I know what you mean by that, but the obvious issue is just like the pragmatic, uh, well, it's not really pragmatic, but they would call it pragmatic reality of being in a team, which goes that like, first of all, because Axar used to be like their star player, that is still in the brains of all the other players. Like they are going to think, in fact, the joke is even people who joined like Electronic and Perfecto probably joined to play with someone like Axile. Mm, so of first of all, you're always going to get a certain status that takes a long time to erode. And then also there's the whole thing of like, it's a sort of like a version of the sunken cost fallacy. You think to yourself, yeah, yeah, but then imagine if I kick him and then he does go to like bet boom or something and then suddenly he's like the eighth best player in the world. I'll feel like an idiot, water. But I know what you mean, Maniac. If you were just diagnosing like triage like a doctor, like what's the short-term fix to this to make this person healthy, that would be the quickest fix. Now, look, obviously, if you do that, though, now here's the difference, though. If I agree with that part of the equation, Maniac... I has to. I have to change my initial comment before. It can't just be any Orpa, though. If I'm getting rid of Axel, it has to be a no, good Orpa, though. We get, no. You know, like, like at least give me someone with some fucking skill. Give me like Zorty or something like that. Give me someone with some yes. skills, you know. Someone who has like potential, could be on a better team, you know. Oh, definitely. No, no. It's also part of my equation as well. Right. Like, if you want Cloud9 to be a, a contender for titles, they, they cannot just have like a pedestrian Orpa who's yes. here and there going to have shots. They need a very strong Orpa who yes. would then also be given all of the rights and all of the freedom he needs. And then you would have... All of it dedicated to Electronic and this Oper, whoever that might be putting on the jersey. Yes. And then, then you would have a team that's working because Bumic, although his numbers are honestly pretty high considering what he does, like the space that he takes and the duels that he takes and how he takes away crossers and all, like he's doing a really good job. Sometimes it can be a little bit comical and meme the way he plays the game, but still it's super valuable, like the space creating that you have for someone that's behind you ready to trade and all. And they, they already have that, so... No, no, you bring in a very strong opera. Like, I'm not going to lie, but at some point, like, if I, I could have put fucking Monacy in that team. Oh, of course. That would have been something. But now, suddenly, Nico started playing Counter Strike at the RMR. So I don't know if I'm just like blindsided. I got, I've got to be a little bit careful yes. here. But, like, if you imagine Monacy in that, in that whole team. Whew. Holy hell. It's why the biggest blue balls thing about Cloud9, which is why I think so many people just got sick of it and hopped off, is that obviously you never got ever like the full lineup. They had the Shiro one without the IGL and then they have fucking Boomich without the Orp. Yeah. It's like, can I ever just have a real team? Like, everyone, we all love the potential of this team because as you say, Maniac, probably the most slept on part about Cloud9 is once you get past that issue... They actually are like some solid fucking set of players. Look at the players. Like Electronic is still good. Look, he's not old Electronic. He might never be, but he's still good. He's still a fucking good rifler. Then you've got Perfecto, still, I think, a master of his role. He's just really good at what he does. Mega consistent player. Hobbit's actually, like you say, he's better than he was in CSGO when people often wanted him to be cut. And Boomich actually, not only IGL him, but actually, it's not even that bad fragment wise. He knows his game. He knows what he's doing. He's got a very weird style. He's obviously like the anti jam in some senses in IGL. Like he actually does push 24 7 CT side, but it actually even works. And the joke is at the moment he even fucking opts for them. Like they, they, but this team's actually solid. It's just like we say, the problem is you're not just missing a piece. You're missing, you're missing such a pivotal piece. It's making everything else look worse in some ways. We see what I mean though. I actually yeah. low key feel like in a way, like for real, cause I like cloud nine. I would like to just bite the bullet now, have them finish like 12th. And then, I, and by the way, if you want to make it even better, have Shiro win the major. I do that. And I think the day after the major, they are fucking DMing a lot of people, if you know what I mean. Like they're making that short list that we've all seen. Like this is it. And then they're just going down the list, seeing which Orpa can join. And then cool, let's get on with it. Because actually this is one of those weird points that I would make before. I've seen this happen in sports so many times, mate, which is you've got like a good team that might even be on the brink of winning. And unfortunately, because they're good that will actually it's like the famous saying in English the perfect is the enemy of the good like whereas in some people search for perfection and don't stick with when they're good you can do the opposite you just stick with being good and you'll never mm, be perfect yeah. you'll never get that top top flight because sadly I do think the potential of this team is really exciting I'm a big fan let's let's pivot and do another team pick a big name pick one of the bigger names a big you? name okay yeah. okay so <sighs> I will say talking about Mouse now 
that it's a spicy one. It's a spicy I one. do feel like, unfortunately, Maus is going to keep being Maus, which is the gatekeeper of the top five. Oh, and it's not okay. going to go beyond. I'm so okay. sorry. I wish I, I wish I could tell you this Shut is the up. moment. Everything is coming Shut together. Up. Oh, my God. They're going to do it. They're going to win the majors. No, 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 no. I no. Because I, I just, I look, one way to look at it on a positive light is to say, yes, Brolin looks very different in that roster. Yes, he does not look like the sad Brolin in NIP who was massively underperforming, obviously a symptom of a profoundly dysfunctional team. No, he looks much better. That is true. I'm ready to give that to him. Unfortunately, I don't think he himself is strong enough to be that sort of engine that makes them finally <sighs> break through the phase semifinal, the vitality semifinal, the sp I mean, Spirit is a bad argument because they play the out the RMR, but then again, it is the RMR. It's a studio game at 2-0, which is psychologically the most lighthearted game you could possibly have, where you have very little to play, or rather, very little to risk, and you can just put it all on the table and have a good time. These are the circumstances under which they beat Spirit. Let's be very careful with that. Now, in Katowice, they made illusion on the second part of the second map versus phase. Like, there was a comeback... The game was starting to actually pick up steam. They were having a couple of good clutches. They were getting warmed up and all. But don't let it fool you. 75% of the game before that, they, they are basically ghosting through this game where FaZe is completely destroying them. Once again, making them feel like they are like the fourth grade kids and then FaZe are like at the end of the high school already and just kind of bullying them around in the in the court. That's, that's how it felt like. And I don't really think that they are ready to make that jump quite yet. And in fact, what really worries me about it is that I don't know what is going to be the sort of the, the factor that's going to change that. I, I don't really know. I think because of the group of people that they are now, it's going to have to be sort of a slow and consistent improvement over time because they don't have just one guy that's coming in with an incredible amount of experience, like being a champion and all, although Brolan has played the game for a while, but I don't see him as that figure. So I, I just... Don't think it's going to be the case. I think, like FaZe, they have a very high floor, and I'm relatively safe about them being in the playoffs. But I think this is where the road ends once again. See, it's, that's, the, that, that's the one problem there, Maniac, is basically, even though I'm now going to sound like a shit on mouse, I'm basically going to say almost the same thing you did, but just again, the Thorin way, so it'll sound like I'm harsher. Because, okay. no, <laughs> here's the sad thing. I actually do think, for real, for it, 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 obviously, I thought before Katowice, Spirit was going to be my best ever example of, yeah, the team's got, like, amazing players, but, like, this is why there's experience matters in this game. You know, it, it takes your time to... Because here's the thing. To me, if the old narratives of how Counter-Strike works is logically Spirit should probably have just lost the final. Like they did awesome the rest of it but what happens is in the final you play like FaZe a team with all veterans who ch don't choke. It's a best of five. Like it's like we said actually on the on the past episode you just lose the Mirage overtime one and then suddenly you know you lose them up and then you, you go damn it 1-3 we could have maybe won that one and then what you do is you learn from that you come back next time you got a bit more experience you've been in the fire you've been tested one day you're the guy doing that and suddenly it's the underdog playing you do The problem Mouse have is they really are still on the fucking underdog side of that. They're still the ones where it's like that I, if you actually watch them, this is another team that sadly, you're right, they are they are one of the worst examples of a gatekeeper. The good news is this. They actually arguably, just because in CS2 they're stronger, they actually arguably are a better gatekeeper. Before they were almost a gatekeeper of like, can you be a contender? Now they're almost a gatekeeper of can you win the tournament? Like, you probably yes. have to be like a tournament winning team to beat them. But the problem is, I'm with you. If you watch the actual potential of this team, it's why the shoe here angle now is very exciting. Because this mad hype he has that he is going to be the next brilliant sort of brain IGL will Boys, he has some pieces where all of his pieces frag. He has a very interesting, balanced, but good set of players here. And even if each of them has a flaw, they all have clear strengths. Like this actual lineup, it's amazingly GM. Even though they did just bring up an academy players, fair play to whoever scouted those players, put them in the academy, then did bring the If it's the Cyclone guy, props to him. If it's the Shuey guy, props to him. If it's JDC when he was here, props to him. Whoever did it, you've actually got into a crazy scenario where to be a mouse team and have a squad like this, it's way better than you should have. But the downside is... 
the experience is the biggest knock on most of them, like you said. I mean, even the brawl on one, I can tell you from talking to people like Flusher and other people who were in teams with him in the past, it sounds like he's someone where he absolutely, he's not like a mega self-confident player. He's one where it sort of comes from people putting him in position, succeed. So even he isn't a guarantee to be like an MVP level player. And so the issue I have is this maniac. I actually feel like this is the team where if it's a normal match, like I think they're going to make the playoffs. I'll give you that. I think they're just a good enough team. If it's a normal match, they'll be fine. they are not that many teams can beat them. But I do think, sadly, you put them in either a quarter or a semi against someone like a spirit. They're not just going to lose. I think they might just collapse, mate. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. where I have to be a bit cynical because I've seen too many people fail that job. Too many people sink when they go in the deep end of the pool. Whatever metaphors you need, guys, I've seen it happen too many times in life. And unfortunately, these are the players. Like, I, I look at these names. They are... Yim fat guy's barely ever played CS guys. Remember, he's still pretty new. Look, he's doing awesome. He look, he is like one of the sleeper revelations of like CS2. But fuck, he, he hasn't played majors. Then you go to Brawler, like we said, guys, a lot of people like two months ago didn't know if this guy even had future in Counter Strike. Like, is he ever going to play in a major playoff? You keep going. Torji has been the classic choker at big lands like this. There's no, Zershin's pretty good, but he plays a super hard role. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot, I, it, it, pretty sweet. It just wouldn't be a surprise if they fell apart. But I, it is a bummer for me because I low-key feel like, all right, here's how I'll phrase it. They're not going to win this major, but I'll tell you what, I would love it if whatever happens with their experience at this one, they are, they're at least in the mix for the China major later this year. Okay. That would be interesting because that's enough time. To, and if you have a nice run here, like you make a semis or something, you can right. get it under your belt where next time you're ready, you're mentally in prepared for getting to that yeah. point and then going a step further. Because I do, I actually do like this mouse squad. I, I wasn't too. a big fan of the one where they had Frozen before they got Yimpat. I thought that was a bit whatever, but I'm a fan of this squad. I think it's a, a cool squad. I was a bit of a Dexter hater, so I'm glad that's got. I think actually it's one I enjoy watching. It's just it's the most obvious team for me that should hit the brick wall of experience. And it's going to be hard. You know, the pressure's, yeah, yeah. pressure's real. People don't get that many. In fact, let me ask you about that. You played on majors. You played on the stages. It, it, there is a there is a, something that goes on in the background that's not like a just a just a random match where you just play in CS, right? No, no. I, I mean, definitely at the time it was completely different. And I assume that hasn't really changed. The only difference is now there's been more majors. So arguably people oh, have sure. gotten accustomed a little bit yes. to the title, uh, all the glory that comes with it and all... In, in, at our stage, when the majors came around, they were they were game changers, like literally game changers. Um, but yeah, I think, and I'm not gonna like sit here and pretend like I personally dominated all that pressure. No, 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 no. I've had moments where the pressure took the better off me, and I know what it is to play a game and feel like it's not working out, and then overcompensating and losing track of you're know, basically the opposite of what we call like flow state, where you're not really thinking anymore and just having a good time. I know exactly what it is to be in in the polar opposite of that. And I also think when it comes to mouse, and I think the contrast with spirit is is very harsh for them because some comes down also to your personality and how you deal with these moments, right? There is a little bit of just an individual aspect to it, which is fight or flight and how you react to adrenaline, whether you get really passive and really scared or whether you get really super brazen and super brave and courageous in your face to fight. Spirit in Karavice kind of showed us that, you know what? Who gives a shit we are on the stage? Let's go. We're going to play exactly. Uh, you talked about like how losing Mirage could have uh, led us to a different grand final. I agree with you. That's why my take on the desk and my prediction was Spirit has to win one of the first two maps of this grand final to win the grand final. That was my take. If they win one of the two first maps and they get over that hump, then they're going to relax and they're going to play their good game of Counter-Strike. Once they won the second map, I knew it doesn't matter what the third map would be. They're a bunch of happy kids, 2-0 in the lead against FaZe, no more pressure, they're going to destroy them. And that's what happened. But still, how they acted in the semifinal, in the grand final, like, Mouse have had already plenty of opportunities to be like Spirit, and they were not like Spirit. Some of the players, some of the playmakers, you mentioned Xertion, I do think maybe he's he's got a bit more of the vibe of the playmaker, even in tense moment, but he's got very hard roles at times, and I think he can be too selfless for his own benefit. I think sometimes he's way too selfless and he, he, he does whatever the team needs in order to win a round where I think he's got a really like fine art of game sense and, and like the plays that he does. I'm a big fan of Zershin personally, but still. But some of the other players like Torji, a little bit on the iffy side when you have like very, very important moments, like cool, you can be the MVP of the Pro League and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip my hat to you because you played well, but this is in front of 200 people in a small area somewhere. This is the major. So... Some of these players have shown to us that they 
will not handle it the way a spirit did in Katowice. But it doesn't mean it can never happen. You can take the longer road, which is to build together, to have more experience together, to learn from all of these experiences, to gradually just steal 1%, 2%, 3%. And, and I think this is the road that if you're a mouse fan, that's the most reasonable one, that your team is going to stick together and they're going to slowly, gradually get more comfortable in these moments. And it's going to be like a virtual cycle when people dare a little bit more and it works a bit more, so they dare more, so they can you know, sort of create this momentum. That's, that's the road you can, we want to go if you're a mouse fan, because we know they're not just immediately going to shine on stage. Like that's, that's just the reality of the roster. Right. We haven't got that much time, but I have one team I want to talk to you about, which is this. I'm just going to say it straight up. I'm be very concise. Bro, I actually think the narrative, the team that seems to have skated bikes, if you look at their results, they were never bad. They haven't been super great, but people have just ignored it. Dude, it's G2. I'm just going to say it right now. I think G2 is going to bomb this major, mate. Okay. As in, as in, I don't think they like. Remember, people are th saying like Monty could be the best player. Like they still got knee calls. They got. If you actually look at how Mouse really plays since Nexa came, and this isn't on Nexa by the way, although he hasn't played great either. Like I actually think even that move of sort of like yeah, it's going to be more cohesive team. But they're not really that great in that sense, and now they've lost some of the firepower. So I've got to tell you, Manic, I could see a world for real where this team just go doesn't make the playoffs again. They're just like ninth to whatever. Like mm. I, I, this is a team where the problem is like. Even the, 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 what I could always say about the JKS lineup was this, is if they hit, they have the ultimate puncher's chance. They can knock anyone out. They don't have the same puncher's chance to me. So I have to say right now, and Nico's not in great form. I think he really has had his issues so far. I keep waiting for it to take over. He's one of those players like Simple, where I just figure if you want it enough, you'll get back there. But it hasn't happened yet. So I've got to say, I, I love Monacy, but that ain't enough, mate. And also, by the way, it's not like Monacy dominated every major he played at. So I'm, I'm scared for G2. I feel like they're going to semi-bomb this one, mate. Yeah, Where are you at? I, you going the other way? You take them from no, playoffs? no, I'm not. I'm not going the other way. But I have a, I have a fundamental problem with the assessment of G2 right now, which is because the last best of three I have seen from them is probably the best CS2 I've seen from them. <laughs> so, I feel like it is so, clouding. Right. It is fucking clouding my judgment, right. right? Okay. Because had this game not happened against FaZe, where they sure. won two zero, and then Nico has like a one point six rating on all, I would have probably told you like, hey, it's just a matter of time. Like, it is a matter of time. This team isn't working out. They tried something with Nexa. It's not working. That's it. For numerous reasons, like skill across the board, insufficient. Nico just being a good player instead of being an exceptional, one of the best players in the world. Hunter, a little bit so-and-so. Nexa is not exactly putting his weight, although maybe he has a bit of a clutching factor, but that's it. And the, just the play style overall. Aside from sometimes some good calls on the T side from Hoopsie, still, I wasn't really impressed. But then... I don't know, like I sort of refuse. I am actively, consciously repressing any hype that could have come from that phase game. I'm, I'm repressing it because I just think it's the most short-sighted, copium-based assessment you could make to the, no, that's it, they're back. Everything clicked, that's it, yep, that's the G2, that's it. What happened against phase, that's, that's the moment. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna wreck everybody. I still think that what you've mentioned, the, the fact that they have a, what if it's a good day factor where they can just knock you out in one punch, and I think it's still here because if Nico has a good day with Monacy, it already is a, a knockdown factor that is stronger than most of the teams. Sure. But I got to say, the, the statistician in me does not see enough consistency over the last three months to say that this is going to happen. It just isn't. In fact, Nico having 1.6 rating is the outlier. It's not, it's not the, the normal anymore, not in CS2. So I... I don't think it's that hot of a take. Now, I would say not making the playoffs, woof, that would be rough. But like, I could have gone safe and just said they make it lose the first round, but I thought, fuck it. Because here's, here's the other mm. way. I'll, I'll give you another reason why I think this. Go and look at the teams that already are in that elimination stage. Like I said, it's most of the big names, right? I'm not saying, will this team definitely beat G2? But just look down the list and think to yourself, is it plausible that team, dude, a lot of those teams... You will look at those names, all the big names. Dude, you could get easy four or five names out of that that could beat G2. Yeah, yeah. And remember, some of these are BO ones. Like, by the way, they've all loose to be like Spirit in the BO3. Like, that's what I, 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 the reason I picked this team purposely, I did it at the end, is I do feel like they're one where I guarantee when they get to the second round of the pickums, everyone's going to immediately just go G2, well, G2, Vitality, Fit. And it's like, no, G2's the one I'm actually way more nervous about, boys. I'm a little bit more yeah, um, touching go on this one. You know? it's, got a, it's got a Vitality vibe to it, too, in a sense of I'm very worried about day one of the Swiss right. system for G2 or that day one is going to make or break this goddamn lineup yes. because if G2 
goes into okay, let me put it this way: if G two either goes O two or one two, they're not making the playoffs. I don't. I don't think they currently have it to sort of battle back to the game five of the Swiss system and make it to the playoffs because that takes a, a special amount of composure as a team and a very wide map pool as well because you're going to play a bunch of best of threes and people are going to test it for you left, right, up and down. So for G2, you need, you need to win two out of the first three games you play. And this is where I can imagine making the playoffs. If that's not the case, I, I just don't think they have the solidity coast to coast to, to make it to the playoffs. Also, two quick things. One... Where is Hunter? This is a guy who's getting HLTV nominated. He hasn't even been here in CSD. I don't know what's going on there. So that's why I was already worried about, because remember the Nexer angle was supposed to be, well, we don't need JKS's fragging because Nexer's like, you know, a cool guy who's going to fill the team. Might even be true, but the problem is Hunter isn't Hunter anymore. And then the last thing I'll say is this. When it comes to the G2 squad, where, where was I going to go on this angle? Let me think. Oh, that's right. The last thing I'll end on is this. I didn't set all of this up so we could arrive at this conclusion, reverse engineer. This is just a happy coincidence. But the other reason why, if my prediction comes true, it will be glorious, is think it through, set a notification for when that last match that they play in Swiss is, because when they lose and don't make the playoffs... Kassad is going to do a tweet. I hope you're all prepared for this. And I am fucking in for it. I am strapped in. I've got my popcorn. I've got the <laughs> Diet Coke. You know what I mean? Really? I'm just ready for it. I'm ready for that drama. Even though, sadly, I know it will also come with a drama that will really annoy me, which is if they don't make the playoffs, the classic bandwagon will blow up of is Nico washed choker fraud you know like there'll be that as usual but I, I, luckily I've heard that song before so it's all good I'll just turn the radio off with that analogy 